after the ball is over, after the skein is done, after the die lots finished, and you are short just one. Many a knitter has made. A tearful and desperate call, pleading with their local yarn shop, go after that ball. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Pen, Hook, and Needles podcast, episode 508. Today is Monday, June 6, 2022, as we are recording. I am Marlisha, also known as Lady Fernico. And I'm Tali, also known as Franciscan Gypsy. We'd like to welcome uh, all new and returning viewers to the Fun in the Woman Cave. If you are new, we're glad you found us. We hope you see something you like and that you will continue to join us. If you are returning, we're glad that you are back. And if you are in the shadows, either new or returning, please feel free to subscribe to the podcast. Just press the little subscribe button on your right. I think it's a little red button. And hit the little bell gently so you can get notifications. If press you'd like it, to do that. Press it. Don't hit it. Press it. Yes. And then if um, you'd like to take part in all the alongs and the camaraderie and possible giveaways and things like that, then um, you need to get involved with our homepage, which is at phnpodcast.freeforums.net. That's phnpodcast.freeforums.net, and that's in the description box below the video. Okay. Um, I have six, and you have nine. Nine. Okay, so you have to go first. Okay. Just stirring my tea a little bit. There we go. So, mm. um, I'm going to show the tea first. I am having the tea spot Russian Caravan. This is an Adagio can, but I've got tea spot in here. I thought I brought my little, uh, did you throw it away? No, I think I put it up here. And I'm about ha halfway through this can. I might have to think about picking up some more Russian Caravan pretty soon. Because this is one of my favorite ones to drink. Uh -huh. And it started out full. I'm halfway through. You're more than halfway through, I think. It feels yeah. like it's more than halfway. So I'm going to need to pick up some more. Yeah, you're about, about two-thirds of the way through. You always say that about the smell, but you always say when you taste it, it's not as bad as you think it is. And I'm using um, Adagio's black tea sugar. I'm trying something new where I'm trying to move away from, not tea sugar, uh, honey. I'm trying to move away from the tea sugar. It's a little more caloric. And um, I'm coming to realize now I'm trying the honey that even though it does accentuate the natural flavor, it adds, it adds an extra layer of sweet to it. This is probably, with a honey, if I choose appropriate honey for the appropriate tea, I'm probably getting more of what the actual tea tastes like. And there really is appropriate honey for appropriate tea. There I is. have I have a whipped chocolate honey up there, and I have in my cart a few other uh, honeys from Adagio that are specific to teas. I have a green tea honey that um, I use for, well, green tea. the garden one? No, it's actually called green tea and yeah. honey. Although they say you can use it for white tea as well, which may, white tea and yellow tea, which makes sense because with yellow tea in particular. Yeah. Um, and then the, I do have the garden one. That's for that was like chamomile yeah. mm -hmm. and things like that. And I want to get a fruit one, which would be for like, I have a couple of tissons, like the Easter one. And, uh, although the Easter one does have marigolds, I might be able to use the garden for that. Um, and the other one is the, uh, gosh, the bunny one. Right. Oh, no, that is the Easter one. There's another one, though. There's um, bunny. The Valentine one. Valentine. Thank yep, you. Yep. So. I'm not a big fan of um, fruit teas, I'm finding out. I, I like citrus ones, so that's good. But, like, berries and things, not so much. You know, it depends on my mood. It depends on the tea. Every mm -hmm. once in a while... I think like I think it was the um, Valentine's Day one. That one almost when you have it makes me think of it's just like a cup of warm sweets. Mm -hmm. And I think if I had the proper honey, it would just be nice. Yeah. Well, I know that I had blood orange the other day, and it was like because I'm doing the community community box this mm -hmm. month. It's a a single serving every day for for the uh, 
days of the month. So this month it's 30. When I did Christmas time, it was 31. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I had blood orange the other day, kind of out of season. I love blood orange. I mean, it's just, you could almost drink that. If you don't mind having a tart tea, you can have it without sugar. Now, I wonder if they would recommend something different if you had, a, oh, this is blood orange this time, but if you had blood orange because it's not necessarily the same kind of, it depends on what fruit, the I, fruit I would honey. Put the, I would put the cinnamon honey in that. Yeah, you would. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I have mine in my, this is what my head looks like, mug. And I find the honey actually you get the most, um, the best effect out of it as you let the tea cool a bit. I think that's true. I'm more that of any tea. Well, I've always been one of those people that if my tea is freshly hot, I noticed this long before tea, I noticed it with coffee. Like, it would be so bitter, and if I let it cool, then it would become drinkable. I think that helps me with being able to drink a little more black teas, but black teas actually irritate my stomach, too, so I don't know what it is about them. This is still pretty hot. Yeah, so you might not get the best taste out of it at this point. How rude. My face cannot be responsible for what it's... Did you not to... grab yourself some water this time? I forgot. <laughs> I need to be able to put it on the machine. I don't know why that just fuzzed there because I have it on automatic and it's supposed to not fuzz anymore. I don't know. I really don't like... I think what happens is because my smell and my taste, everybody's smell and taste is so... Um, intrinsically or tied up. Yeah. I think that um, I love the way s campfire smells something. I think it was Kara who said something about them having a candle somewhere that I'm like, okay, that's not a candle I want to have in my house. That's a campfire. If I had that in my house, I'm going to think my house is on fire. Uh, so it, to me, smoke doesn't belong with tea. Right. It, it belongs with marshmallows and hot dogs and, you know, things like that. But And s'mores. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but not but not tea. I just, I can't. <laughs> it reminds me of Thor. What do you drink? Not tea. <laughs> Heathen. <laughs> mm. In my Adagio, this is my Adagio double walled uh, mug. I earned this one. I didn't have to buy it. And You earned I, that mug? Yes, I earned that mug. Um, what I do is I use this when I do the communities or if I have some kind of single serving because it's perfect for that. Mm-hmm. So I'm, my tea for tomorrow, I do the day ahead of time so I get the picture taken and everything and have it ready so when I get up in the morning, 3 or 4 in the morning, I just put it in there before I get my day started. I have citrus mint, citrus mint green, and this has got, <clears throat> you're going to have to read that. Okay, so it's green tea, spearmint leaves, lemongrass, lemon verbena, verbena? Verbena. Yeah, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. It's an E in there. Uh, orange, marigold mm. flowers, natural lemon flavor, natural orange flavor, moderate caffeine. This is really good. It has a nice <clears throat> citrusy, minty. I, when, I t when I first tasted it, I told Ty it kind of reminded me of limonade, but with mint. Which I was like, that sounds terrible to me. Because mm. <laughs> I don't like lemonade. I'll try this. It's not lime. Lemon is lime. Yeah, but I don't. They're t it's very, it's tend to be dry. It's very strong mint. Lime's not dry. No, it really isn't. You didn't take enough to taste it. I mean, it's, it's de I wouldn't choose it. Right. I like it because of the mint and, and the lemon. But what's overwhelming for me is it's lime and lemon. So to me, it does taste like a limonade. And I'm not a big fan of things that like are lemonade, limonade. That I find them very, mm. uh, they dr I find that they dry me up. And I already have issues with dry mouth. I like that. Okay. So, that takes care of our tea and our mugs. Okay. Um, let's see what's next. I guess we go into our longs. We don't have anything in terms of um, uh, administrati or whatever we want to talk about. Mm -hmm. No. I mean, we have another... What is our next long we hit when we finish June? It's uh, Dysautonomia, isn't it? I believe so. I, I, you, you keep track of those things, <coughs> not me. We may have to tack on um, a little bit about the... Um, psoriatic arthritis, the arthritis stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I can find out a little bit about that. We'll see. I, I'm still not quite sure what I have, but they said it's that. So <laughs> we'll see. Um, for the time... Although it does seem to match some things you're noticing with your skin. Yeah, and in the back of here. Yeah. Like that. Um, 
Okay, Autism Awareness is in the last month. It runs from March through June. No, April through June. April through June. And so we are in the last quarter, almost through the first week of the last um, uh, month. And this is just basically that we are, you know, thinking about people on the spectrum and <clears throat> being mindful of them. I, I'm not sure I know what that means exactly. I keeping mean, them in mind. Keeping them. I know, but, you know, there's so many, they throw that word around a lot. That's all it means. I mean, it sounds just, fancy, but it just means keeping them in mind. It's just, you know, thinking about them. So yeah, um, that, that's all it is. Let's see. This uh, goes through June 30th, so once we hit July 1st, if the threads are still open, of course, you can put something in, but if the threads have been closed, you're done. So don't wait. You know, Try and get everything in before uh, July 1st. All right, midnight Eastern Standard Time, okay? Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Please tag the projects PHNAA2022 on Instagram. We do have a co-host. That's Laura Concert. She's always co-hosts co this with us since maybe the second year or third year. She's mm -hmm. always been with us. It's, and, it's been for a long time. And as long as we're doing it and she's willing, she will be a co-host. So we are very happy to have her with us. And her rules and things are in her Facebook or wherever it is she's doing it. Um, I think it's her Facebook. But she I has, don't know. I think she sells a Ravelry group too, but I'm not sure. She could. I need to touch base with her. Laura, I do intend to catch touch base with you. I just haven't had time. Okay. Um... You must be a member of the group to which you are posting the project. Projects must be knit, crocheted, or loom knit, and be bright colored predominantly, okay? Other colors like black, white, tan, that kind of stuff, you can have it in the project, but it has to be small amounts, okay? Uh, the one whip per project per week, the FO, whenever it's finished. For those of you who are new to the podcast, um, you can post your... If you have a smaller project and you work on it Monday and Tuesday and you finish it Wednesday, you have the whip maybe on Tuesday and the finished object you can post on Wednesday, that's fine because it's finished. Mm -hmm. But you can't do um, progressive whips in the same week. And you could have a whip for every project that you do. Right. So you, but you, you can't have multiple whip pictures for the same, same project. project. In the same week. Yes. Okay. Now, we do have prizes. Uh, I showed yesterday, last week I think it was, the prizes that we got from Christina, I believe it was. Um, we were very grateful for that. Yes. And I think it was last week, wasn't it? Or I, 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 I it might have been two or three weeks ago. Yeah, I don't remember. But we, we do have prizes from her. We have wonderful donators. We're very happy yes, uh, and grateful you. because we will be able to give you the prizes we do without them. So we're very, very blessed to have them, very grateful to them. Um, we do have, um, I believe... Somebody contacted me. Oh, it was Renna. Renna contacted me with a prize donation. And I don't want to say anything just yet because I want to make sure I have the right donation for the right person. Right. But it's a nice donation. Um, all of them are nice donations. Yes. But this is one that we haven't had before. So um, the person who wins that is going to be very blessed for that. Okay. Thank you, Renna. Um, and she said whatever. She, I, We're thinking we're going to do it for one that ends in September so it's available for Christmas. Right. Okay. Now... Um, let me see here. Uh, we do have featured patterns and yarns, okay? Now, for anyone who's been with us, they know this for you newcomers. And my yarns and my pattern slash patterns, if I ever do another one, Talia's patterns and Laura Concert's yarns and patterns are always featured, always, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and if you, so that means if you have a FO with a featured pattern or a yarn, that's two chances at a prize for the finished object only. If you have a featured uh, pattern and a featured yarn for an FO, then you have three chances at a prize, again, for the FO only, and you are responsible for your own multiple postings. We want to give you guys as many chances yes. at a prize as possible. Um, we also have, for this autism awareness, other featured patterns. We have uh, the Braid It Bright pattern by George, who is 10 hours or less. You want to get some good deals on wonderful patterns, 10 hours or less, George has on Ravelry and on his own site, 10 hours or less, uh, last I knew. Okay, he's mm -hmm. really fantastic. He's very helpful. He has multiple sizes and multiple yarn stuff. He's really, yeah. he's great. He helped Talia when she was uh, learning how to do her patterns. Yes, he did. So, um, and then the, um, and he developed the Braid It Bright for our first autism awareness. Yeah, he uh, he made sure it was formatted, right? Mm -hmm. Very nice, very nice person. 
Um, and then the other one is the um, is by formerly known as uh, Miss World. It's now a modest creation, and that's her weighted lapgan and teddy bear. Another pattern that was developed for the autism awareness. It's actually two patterns. It's two patterns, but it's sold together. It's sold yeah. together. So you can do one or the other or both. If you do both, they are eligible for separate postings because they're separate projects mm -hmm. unless you manage somehow <laughs> to do it with less than 50 yards for each one which I, I think you would have to be using like thread or something yeah you know, like sewing thread so um yeah those are eligible for two chances at a prize um for the finished object only and if you have the yarn featured and the pattern featured then you have three chances at a prize okay um let's see here they must be as we said brightly colored we yes if if would take your word for it if we can't see on the monitor, but you know, because you guys have been great about that. So, Let me get a little something to drink. Mm. Now, the P and Tails, oh, I'm sorry <laughs> for you guys who have ear, ear buds. The PHN T and Tails Cal Cal Lal is our year one for, for 2022. It's backed by popular demand. We've done it, this is our third time now doing it. And this is anything related to tea and or tales. So tea's obvious. Tales, we're talking not movies. Okay, we're talking about books. Books, novels, short yes. stories, plays, narrative, poetry, novelizations of movies are okay. Children's books are okay as long as they have a full story with a full beginning, middle, and end. Um, so, yeah, if you have any questions, you can post it in the group or contact one of us. Um, we have wonderful moderators yes, we do. and so you know they will answer if we can and some of our people who aren't official moderators who are very mm -hmm. knowledgeable yes. and they will help you as well so um <clears throat> the this you're allowed to have previous whips okay you're allowed to have previous whips in most of our longs except for ready set go because you know want to make use of all your projects yes okay yes okay chatter pictures all on the same thread whip per project per week the the rules are basically the same, okay? Featured yarns and featured patterns. The the core of them is, like I said before, my stuff, Taya's stuff, and Laura's stuff. And this one we have also Joanna Johnson, Mom Cook, and uh, Bryony Bears, which is uh, KF Jones and Bakery Bears. Mm -hmm. Anything that's related to tea and or tails. Um, Mom Cook is Loom Knit, for those of you who Loom Knit. And K is... For her stuff, I think she's majority knit. Laura has both, but it has to be related to TN or Tails. It could be the yarn, it could be the pattern, it could be the name of the project, whatever. As long as you can make it related to TN or Tails, we don't care, okay? Uh, yeah, and we do have projects. Uh, to, we do have uh, prizes, but I don't have them with me because they're over there somewhere, and I'm too lazy to go up and get them. Mm -hmm. And besides, it's very crowded in here, so if I try to get up and get the stuff, things will go all over the place. Right. So And microphone would be probably the first. Um, yeah, so that takes care of that. Okay, just finish a stitch. Mm. Okay. How many did you say you had? Nine. I was just thinking about that. So twice, twice. I think it's it's no more than twice, twice. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> do do do. do. All right. All right. So this first one got a little bit of work on. I think I need to measure it again because I'm at, whenever I'm at a point where I have a lot of measuring, I and I think I'm close. It takes longer because I'm not always in a position where I can measure something. Um, especially if it's a bigger project. If it's sock, it's another thing. It's small enough they can fit on most table spaces. Mm -hmm. But if I have a sweater or something that I'm going to weigh, I'm going to weigh, uh, measure, that, ma that makes a difference. I'm going to throw some small tea in here. No robust though. Sometimes just a little, if there's a little bit of powderiness, like black yeah. tea. Or would... like the, um, having the cinnamon or whatever, it doesn't dissolve. Right. <clears throat> so, in my, um, Silver Shed Bat Signal bag, this is one of my earliest Silver Shed bags. Mm. Um, is the Puget Sound. This is the Fundamental Men's Pullover uh, by Jen Hagen. It's for Dad. I'm using Cascade 220 in the colorway Puget Sound. So, 
front has been done for a while. I think I will cry if he decides that the fact that it's probably a bit oversized now is a problem. Because he, he lost a lot of weight and... He's not saying, a, he said he lost 60 pounds. Did he really? Yeah. This might not fit at all then. It'll be fine. Uh, because I was starting on... Well, he was already starting to lose weight, I think. Because yeah. we based it off a favorite sweater. Yeah, but... Is he still wearing that sweater? I'm sure he is. I mean, it's, it's not like a suit that yeah. you know, in bags. If he's, if he's wearing a sweater like that, he ha he's, if he's wearing this sweater, he's probably going to have clothes under it. Yeah. Because um, that's my only concern is because he's been losing weight, it really does make it hard. Um, so I'm hoping he'll still want to Well, he's not losing it. weight anymore, so that's good. Yeah. But still, it doesn't help. 60 pounds is significant. Uh -huh. So... I think I have a little while longer, then I will do the shaping for the neck. Is this the front? This is the front. If he doesn't want, I'll wear it. <laughs> it's going to be way too big for you. <clears throat> I know. That's the whole idea. I'm not trying to make another sweater for you. I love sweaters. Absolutely love them. Cardigans especially, but also the bulky kind of sweatshirt pullover kind of things. Yeah. yeah. And, and I don't mean necessarily bulky by heavy. I mean bulky as in... Oversized. Yeah, so I really hope that <coughs> it'll still be something he wants to wear. I think it will be. He might be, not. He might not be able to wear it to work. He'll probably wear it at home. Yeah, but that's okay. Yeah, I think he'll love it. I know he'll love it. Um, because when I started this, I didn't anticipate. I mean, he was trying to lose weight at the time. I think he had already lost some weight. Yeah, I think he had, so. but I still based it off of a favorite sweater. I don't remember which sweater it was that you based it off. I don't know. You pulled one out and you said this is one he wears all the time, and mm. we based it off of that. But the thing is, if he was wearing it all the time, he probably had it for a long time. Mm -hmm. So it might have been a little snug on him. Okay. So there's, you know. That might help too. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's. He wasn't supposed to dramatically lose a lot of weight when I started this he sweater. Did. He uh, he lost more than I thought he needed to. I told him he needed to stop. He, he's not trying actively right now, but. Yeah. So. <coughs> okay. It has messed all my plans up. I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. And my. This is my bag, Large Angels bag, is a project you haven't seen before. This is my film noir shawl project from the Scrap Shawl Pattern by Anastasia Sattel. And I'm using mostly Bat Miss Babs yarn, I think. Okay, why can't I open this? Oh, that's why. Who wants to buy this kind of thing? There we go. All right. So, here's how far I've gotten. Oh, I was supposed to go twice, twice. Oh, okay, we can do twice, twice after this one. So that's how far I've gotten on this. And right now I've gotten the bag that color, and I have this one. Do you not do yours in order? Because this is a new one. Yeah, it's, you, I, I actually, How is this before all your others? Because I, pu I put it where the other one was. Okay, because I usually move mine along. I do too, but this time I didn't. Okay, because I confused I was me. In a, I was in a hurry. Oh, okay. So I just, and then this color here. And I have, you know, I just have three yarns in here right now. The other ones are over there. And so, because um, I don't want to have it, like, bulging out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this actually, even though this is black and white, it almost has a blue tinge to it. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, I, I sat down and did this in one sitting. That's nice. So I had to, um, I have to be careful that I don't sit sideways because I noticed this way back when I was doing crocheting a lot and it's starting to bother me again is if I don't sit straight back, my shoulder hurts. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it's just going to emphasize proper posture, proper posture and pro proper alignment. So, yeah. well, that's part of posture. I'm really happy with this. Uh, feel this though. This is, well, I, I, give me a sec. I thought this was DK. It is DK. And I'm using the same hook I used for my other one, but this feels heavier. Like, maybe this DK is closer to a worsted. Well, it's Miss Babs, isn't it? No, this one is... Yeah, this one's Miss Babs. So, there you go. If it's the Yowza Miss Babs... It's not Yowza. It's not Yowza. No, this is... No, I'm sorry. This one's not Miss Babs. This one is... I want to say this is Dragonfly Fibers. No, because remember you picked up some more at the Miss Babs sale? I have some Dragonfly Fibers in here. Maybe this is Miss Babs. Anyway, this is the Miss Babs, because... It's not Yowza, though. You had to pick up extra this is not yowza though because mm. um, i know your black and white one was that so that's this 
Because you picked up a ton, not a ton. You picked up another skein. I have three. I have base. three of these. You have you have a couple in the same base, and the one is in Kalawa or and whatever. And then it's a different. No, the one. one's in different yeah. different base. Yeah. So this, and then the others are all dragonfly because they're like uh, area twelve uh, from. Isn't it Hunger Games? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, there's a couple Hunger Games and Black Pearl and that kind of stuff, which is from you know Pirates and all that. But yeah, so that's what I've got from here. I'm using, I'm still using an eye hook, so I'm not sure why it's it's so heavy. You know, it must be something to do with the yarn itself. Yeah. So I need to make sure I actually go twice, twice. Mm -hmm. twice okay. Twice. So next, I haven't worked on this one in a while. Uh, got a decent amount done on it. If, come here. Hang on, I think it's stuck on my chair. It is. I really like the way this color works out. Hey, hold on. There it is. Okay, so in my Knitter's Magic soft brown bag with the kitty fabric inside, kitty's playing with yarn balls fabric. Like so. Um, this is the Quicksilver sweater. Um, it's a Hillcrest coat by Amy Miller. It's for Davina. Um, and I am at the point where I'm going to be setting up to attach the pockets. Oh, cool. Because is that the one that folds? Or is it the what this one does, no, that, that was um, the last sweater I finished. Oh, okay. What this one does is it's an inset pocket, so mm -hmm. I think it goes... You have to sew it? I'm not sure. I haven't done it yet. Well, I, you might have to kitchener it. I'm not sure. Well, no, because it's still alive. I would still be knitting. Oh, okay. Um, I'm not quite completely sure how this pocket builds. It's supposed to be like a you slip your hand in kind of thing. Like it's mm -hmm. actually supposed to be like a kind of a hidden pocket. Slide pocket. It's a, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not like uh, this sweater here that is. You can definitely see it's a folded pocket. Let's hope that it's not the construction is like that hat that I had. That baby hat we couldn't have, figure out how it was supposed to be folded. It said to fold it, and it was like, remember we couldn't figure out how to yeah. fold it. Yeah, that's because they wrote dumb instructions. <coughs> so um, this is the Hillcrest coat. Um, I'm gonna have to get when I because when you put a zipper on. You have to have it on something. You can't just mm -hmm. lay it flat and put because a person's not built flat. Well, we can bring the the. I mannequin. have my dress dummy downstairs, yeah, downstairs. Mm -hmm. and I'll just make the measurement the same as Davina's mm -hmm. because that's why I got that one is I could adjust, adjust the measurements of the bust and things like that um, because it doesn't need to be super fitted. I just need it to have some shape to it because she and I wear nowhere near the same size, even before I gained some weight. So. Um, She's a little bit. It's also just, a, you know, even if we had had more of a similar, like, build, mm -hmm. the height difference alone. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant. She's a little bit. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm um, because it can, could mean one or two things. A little bit could also mean, like, mm -hmm. it can mean several different things. So I think that I'm not sure I'll have to see because this one is already bound off and I, and there's no cabling along here so I want to say that's on the inside mm -hmm. and that maybe these two will be joined and then maybe I will sew it on the inside like that might be it. Is this the one that she crochets it together? No. No, this is, a, this is all one piece. Right, I understand that. There's no reason to crochet it together if it's all one piece. Well, you're talking about seaming that pocket. Yeah, but that that's not the one. That was the one you're thinking of. Oh, no, um, was a completely okay, okay, okay. flat sweater. Okay, but my the, point is, you could crochet this. Technically, I could, but you're asking if this was right, the sweater, right, right. and no, I <clears> probably <throat> wouldn't because it would make a slightly bulkier Bulky, seam, yeah. and I'm trying to hide this yeah. pocket. Yeah. Um, slip stitch might not, but. Um, depending on well, even a slip a stitch hook. is going to be bulkier than a seam, than just a normal seam. I wouldn't do that. Um, so yeah, I think that's how it's going to be. Is that it'll look like that on the outside, and then on the inside, it'll be 
sewn here, which is actually going to be a decent sized pocket. Um, hold a Kleenex or something. I think it might hold a little bit more than Kleenex. But you don't want to put too much in there. Yeah. You don't, yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter how big the pocket is when you have knitted garments or something. You I mean, this is a heavy. heavier knitted garment. It's yeah. not alpaca. It is right. but wool, still, and it's a heavier weight. Still, it's, you know, unless it's woven. Yeah, I mean, it's about as much as you put in a normal sweater pocket that's mm -hmm. store-bought. I mm -hmm. mean, we, you know. Does it have nylon in it? It's just a, it's, hold on. Because it's, if it doesn't have nylon in swish. it, that'll have, it should then. Nylon. No, this is 100% superwash merino wool, but nylon stretches. Mm -hmm. So actually, it's better that it's not nylon. But it also, well, no, it actually, it also will um, give it some uh, support. With the nylon? Nylon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it will keep it from getting, it's, oh, I'm sorry, it's a superwash. I'm sorry, that makes it stretch. This is superwash. Um, it's the nylon, you're right, about the nylon. Now, they do say you can tumble dry this. Mm -hmm. Well, superwash. Yeah. Um, so... Not that I foresee, a lot of times sweaters, unless they're visibly dirty, mm -hmm. sweaters just tend to be worn. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping, because she doesn't own any real sweater, she calls this flimsy little dress thing a sweater. It's not a, it's not a sweater. It's, a, it's just a... It's barely enough to cover her arms. Well, it covers her arms, but it's not, it's not very heavy. No, it's kind of worthless. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's a fashion statement, that's all. It's not worthless. I mean... <laughs> It, judgy, judgy. Okay, it if something's merely a fashion statement, it doesn't have. It's not very practical. So, what's your point? You mean you can't look pretty if she's not? If she's not going out in the. It's just a piece. It's layering piece. I think. I tend to prefer my things to be a little more useful. Yeah, but that sounds judgy. <laughs> judgy, judgy. So yes. Um. This will be nice and warm for her. Mom won't have to fight for her to wear it because it's gray. Mm -hmm. She's been trying to get me to make her cabled sweater forever. Now, it's not the same as the Vivian, which she's been hint like Every single time I wear it, multiple times a day, she tells me how much she loves the sweater. I'm not knitting her a Vivian. I hope you told her that. Oh, I've told her many times I'm not knitting her a Vivian. It doesn't matter how many times she says she likes the sweater. Uh, that was a lot of work. I'm not knitting again for me. I'm not going to knit it for her. I was like her looking at my yarn saying, that's a really pretty color. Do you want the color? Do you want this yarn? And say something, and I'll see what I can do. But she's, you know, she hints. <laughs> she does. She does. Um, but, no, I've told her many times over the years that she's not getting that mm -hmm. one made for her. Mm -hmm. Simply because it's a lot of work. Um, I remember something about the charts being confusing. Now, to be fair, you were new. I was brand new at knitting at that point, so it might not have so much been that the charts were confusing as I was not only figuring out how to knit, but also how figure out how to knit from charts and having multiple different charts each row. Mm -hmm. So, uh -huh. and they nuts. weren't on the same <clears throat> number sequence. <throat> so you might have one chart that was like a five row repeat. And then you have another chart that was like a 10 row repeat. And you have a different chart that'd be like a 12 row repeat. And you would have to keep notes to make sure you were where you were supposed right. to be. That's just too much work. <laughs> so I didn't start on an easy one. There's a reason that I, I think of returning to that sweater. And I'm like, this is it. <laughs> I have PTSD <laughs> sweater. P no, I don't PTSD. That sweater gives me the, I can't, I couldn't knit again. I just couldn't. And one more product. That's it. Yeah. Uh, no, I have one more. Um, ah, actually this one, this is, is a re-knit sweater. I, this will actually be the first, I don't think I've ever re a sweater before this. This is a re -knit. This is in my Silver Shed USA knitting caps on a pale field bag. Um, this is the Cuddly Owl sweater. This is Ginny's Cardigan by Mary Chiba. This is for mom. I found this and we actually had to go find it again because so, it's somewhere in this house, but I have lost my physical form of Interweave's unofficial Harry Potter Knits um, book. Yep, it's a magazine. Magazine. It's, it's one of those. It's one of those really nice Editions. magazines that that you know that can pass for a book. And um, the patterns in it are gorgeous. And I, we we had to look all over the place to find the digital form. It was really hard to find. Mm -hmm. My physical form is, is somewhere, because I saved it. I would have never gotten rid of that, because I love too many of the patterns. But 
I really enjoyed knitting this and it has an owl on the back. Mm -hmm. So I'm going, I'm knitting this for mom. Mom dyed the yarn. Uh, this is an alpaca. I think Davina got you the alpaca for like one. Yeah, of, for my birthday yeah. or Christmas or something. This is a very airy, mom, this is going to be such an airy sweater. That's going to be perfect for my, uh, my springs into, yeah. into, you know, in the fall, stuff like that. In the summer when I go places. So huh. I've only <clears throat> just started the lace. So you really can't tell. Um, I wanted to do more on it, but I got distracted. Um, but yeah, so I remember really enjoying this last time. I'm hoping because I'm not using acrylic this time, I can fix the error I made with the collar because it wasn't meant to be a v-neck. I messed up. I think I bound off too tightly on the collar. So I did a quick fifth, a, a, I made things up as I went and I made it a v-neck to correct for my collar that was too tight at the top. This one, if done correctly, it can button all the way up and you can leave one open if you like. Yeah, I don't like v-necks. So that's <clears throat> not the natural set of the sweater. I just, it was, I was working with, a, with an acrylic that wasn't particularly forgiving. This, I mean, I can already tell this is just nicer than the one I knit myself. Maybe at some point I should re-knit one for myself in a nicer fabric. Um, I guess more alpaca yarn and... Yeah, uh, because... Um, I don't wear my orange one a lot simply, and maybe I should do an, an actual orange, um, because like bright orange, well, a burnt orange, not, not like this is more of a, of a brown, uh, but like a burnt, similar to the color that I have it in. That's a copper. It's called pennies from heaven. Yeah, but not this one. Similar than the one yeah. I have it mm -hmm. in. That's a, an actual burnt orange. This is more of, like you said, a copper. I think I have a color similar to that. That's not quite pennies from heaven. It's something else. And I could show you what I have. Oh, Ty, I've got that roasted chestnuts. I'll have to take a look and see how it compares. And, oh, you know what you liked was my salted caramel. Yeah, we could see how it compares. Because my thing is, I never wear this orange sweater. I love lace on it. I love everything about it, except it's very heavy because it's an acrylic. And I don't like how it feels like it's tight on my arms. And it's not just because... I gained weight or whatever. What would happen is if I did get a nice yarn that matched the color, I would then steal the buttons from that one <laughs> and uh, put it on the other sweater. And if I wanted to, the other one could just be like a I'm cold, heavy sweater. In the house. In the house that could be worn open. Yeah. Uh, but it's a I just don't wear the other one. I think this one's fabric's gonna be a lot nicer. If it happens to be a similar yarn as what you have here, I could just use the same needles and mm -hmm. don't have to uh, do a gauge swatch again. Well, you know, what reminds me of is, is my Zarina shawl. Right, <coughs> that I have and we keep saying we're gonna put up for um, people to. They want an acrylic one. Yeah. Because it's just, it's it doesn't, for me, it doesn't drape right. Yeah. And so, I mean, it's, it's it drapes. I mean, it's, it's the same shawl. It's a beautiful shawl, but it's just, it's acrylic and it just doesn't feel right for me. And I have two acrylic sweaters I do wear fairly often. It's my big blue one and my big yellow one. But the thing with both of those is they're loose sweaters. Mm -hmm. They're also both Jane Richmond. Uh, the yellow one's the sun. Both of those sweaters are very loose, so I don't feel constricted by them. The red one I have, I don't wear it a lot. I do wear it a lot more than I do the orange one, but it also has a constriction problem. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it was back when I, I was like, ooh, an inexpensive yarn, and what does it matter? It matters. Well, now you can get it a little, a little more inexpensive than normal because I can just buy bare yarn and dye right. it up for you. Now, <clears throat> for another red sweater, I probably wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily knit the antler again. Um, it's a nice sweater, but it's not necessarily the one I'd automatically go, oh, that'll be my next red sweater. No, I'll choose a different pattern. Um, I know right now I haven't gone to working on it again. I have a, um, it was a Miss Babs that, I forget what I had. Oh, I had it in a shawl and I still had some yarn left over. So I ripped out the shawl and it's some sort, one of her more wild colors, but works for the sweater. You pulled it out of the wet, didn't you? I pulled it out of the wet yeah. and I had some other skeins, mm -hmm. enough for a sweater and I'm doing it in... Oh, it was one that um, Amy from, um, yeah, um, not round the twist. No, no, it's um, um, the one with her husband. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
it, it, I, I know. I always mixed up theirs with Round the Twist. I always wanted to say which, mm -hmm. but I can't remember what their podcast is. Their, uh, I used to watch them fairly regularly. Yes, I did. But she had pulled out, she was showing old sweaters and she showed this one sweater. I was like, I want to knit that. And I tried to do it in black and I got so bored, I yanked it out. I'm now doing this like reddish, orangish. It's, it's multicolored, but all the colors fade together really nicely. So it actually doesn't look too crazy. It looks autumn mm -hmm. So. Well, I have to pull out, when I first started doing sweaters, crochet sweaters, Ty brought me a whole bunch of sweater patterns. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go back and look at those because I'm not afraid to do a crochet. Well, also some of those are, I gave you a bunch of my crocheted mm -hmm. sweater patterns that I have from when I was starting. Yeah, you gave me a bunch of crochet sweater patterns, period. I just um, don't want to have necessarily some of the, like the blue one I have is held up fairly well, uh -huh. but I think I'd like to kind of do something that's maybe a single crochet, which is going to drive me nuts. I'm probably going to have to do it in bulky weight. Yeah. Oh, mom, it occurred to me, if the one I'm thinking about with the multicolors is kind of reddishy orangey, if that's more orange than red, I might do this one as a red. Oh, okay. Because it all depends on if it's more orange or more red. My what, a maroon or something like that? Uh, <coughs> I'd have to take a look and see because I, I wouldn't have a bright red sweater I wear all the time. And I love a bright red. Um, I mean, I have some, you know, pure reds. I have a cherry red and I have yeah, that kind know, of fire thing. engine red. It'd be one of those kind of reds if this other sweater is more orange. It mm -hmm. all depends if it tends more red or more orange. If it tends more orange, I've got orange color, covered. Uh, if it tends more red then I would need an orange and that would be whatever one of these would end up with because yeah I I just I want to have one of these I actually wear mm -hmm. instead of like not wearing because the sweater's not comfortable right um so yeah okay is that two that is two okay in my knit for brains owl teapots bag that was given to me by Laura concert is my um Arwen's Hooded Cal project from the Thorns Hooded Cal pattern by whoever it is. I can't remember. I've got the um, photographer down still. So I've, been, I've made some progress on this. This blue slate colorway by Miss Babs. It's a Yowza skein. And I am just kind of going round and round and round. Um, I thought I, I didn't do a whole lot of work on this because I got sidetracked with things, but. This is fun. If I, if I know I'm going to be watching a movie or something, my husband's like, you're not watching the movie. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm, I'm just, I'm going round and round and round. So yes, I am. I'm watching the movie. So, um, yeah, this is just a very... I figure it takes up just as much attention as eating does. And drawing. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, I, I don't do, like the other day I was trying to do something. I forget what it was, but I had to count. I was like, okay, I'm going to finish this and I'm not going to do it anymore. Because we were watching the Mission Impossible old TV show the original TV show. And um, I thought, oh yeah, I'm gonna have to stop counting here and just put it aside because I'm gonna get messed up here. Cause even the old 60s TV show was really good. So, um, well, I know normally I knit when I uh, read, mm -hmm. um, if it's a simpler thing. I, ca I can't always do things with charts if I'm reading unless it's an audiobook. But I found that eventually I had to set it aside when I was doing the choose your own adventure modern mystery because yeah. I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to end up dead, so... <clears throat> that might be a bad thing. Uh, I, yeah, so for that I couldn't uh, knit on because you're actually actively making decisions. Right. Well, that's all I have to say about this one. Okay, so... Oops, hold on, it's funny. You have to do two two again. Yeah, I just had to find where it went. It, uh, I hit a button and it went all the way to the top again. Mm -hmm. Darn those buttons. Well, not a button because it's not a button the way it used to be, but um, I must have hit the screen mm -hmm. in a certain way. So, in my Laura Teapot's bag is the is Laura's hood. It's Thorn Hooded Cow. <laughs> now, I have a theme here. I honestly, I don't think I've worked on this since the podcast because I haven't wound up the next skein. Um, so it's exactly where it was um, when I was on the podcast, when I was working on it. So, 
yeah, I need to wind that up. I've been distracted by other things. It's pretty. So it's pretty. I just need to go and wind up that other skein. You on the hood? Yes. Yeah. Um, and I'm not even doing the particularly wide hood. I'm just doing a normal hood. It's just that this, I seem to remember this took more than one yowza. So it doesn't You just want to be ready. Yeah. And this has about the same amount of yard. It just yeah. yowza. So it's just good that we happen to have, that you happen to have two. And I'll still have enough for my other project. So there we go. And one more. Mm -hmm. um, oh, it's this one. So in my, um, and I'll bring it up in a second, in my little skein in the big wool velveteen rabbit bag is my um, rainbow socks well it's the rainbow socks project the pattern is vanilla cream by kf jones and this is the one i tend to use if sorry my yeah. you know when you have just a little bit of skin and just like pulls yeah, on everything yeah and it just did that okay <coughs> um it's um this is a pattern i tend to use if i have a crazier yarn that will overwhelm a pattern and make it to the point where the yarn's not shown to its best uh effect and neither is the pattern the pattern might as well not exist other than to break up your yarn it's the cerebell for, for socks. so this one except the cerebell actually does have some patterning mm -hmm. uh this is literally but it works with everything yes it does um but this really is just a straight to pretty much other than the heel. Well, my point was that it works with that yeah. kind of yarn. It's what you use for that kind of yarn. Yeah. It's so, not that it was, you know, patterned. Um, just grab a sock form. Grr. Okay. There's the bag. And first sock has been done for a while. I've still been too lazy to weave in the ends. So, as you can see with the first sock, we have purple heel, green toe. Go ahead, go ahead and put it on here. And this one has been done for a bit. Um, there we go. So that's her. That works out. And then here, it's barely. You know, we just got past the heel, and it's got the green heel and had the purple toe and it's really funny it really does lighten up the yarn to have the heels different um and i haven't done uh only fraternal socks before but it's kind of fun gives you something to look forward to because i was really excited to hit the heel for this because i hadn't yet right done this heel in that color so it was like it gave me something to look forward to always a good thing um so that and who cares for socks especially for something like this is a bit of a crazy sock um it works so yeah i um am working through my gusset decreases right now for my second sock i look forward to having these done because i have set aside um one of laura's to start and her yarn feels really soft mm -hmm. And I can't wait to use it. And she provided heels and toes for that one as well. And I'm, I'm waiting for her to finish that so she can start mine that Laura gave me. Um, so. What is this? Lots of stuff. Well, you'll have to wind it up because. Wind what up? Your own yarn. Oh, well, no. I'm not worried about that. It's not, it's not a priority at this particular yeah. point in time. Um, I'm just trying to figure out what I've done here with this spaghetti here. Well, I am done, but I'm gonna keep waffling. But I can't. What? What did you? Oh. Well, maybe I can help. No, you. I got it. I got it. Okay. At least to a point where I can do show what it. I have to do here. Okay. In my, um, just want to, don't want to lose any stitches here, though. Let me see here. Okay. In my um, B wing country bag is my. She gave it to me. Isn't that pretty? Um, my country roads blanket project from the jelly roll pattern. Uh, which is a blanket pattern by KF Jones. And I'm getting ready to add another color in, which is why all the hoopla with the yarn. So I 
you can see where I've got this color in. If you look at it, it's just about the size of this one here. But I've got, right now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks, blocks in quotes, if you will. And I'm going to be adding the ninth one. This one and this one are my colors. In fact, I think this one might be my color as well. I'm not sure. And then this one is also my color, which this is the one to be picked out for this time. So um, this is another one that I can kind of, you know, just, you know, once I change the color, I can just go. You know, I don't have to really pay attention too much except to make sure that uh, I don't like uh, <laughs> turn around and do the same thing going the wrong direction or something. Why is this like this? I'm trying to find the other end here because it's got this. <laughs> anyway, this is a little bunny foo foo that's going to be Sorry. added in. I don't know if you can see the pink and the blue and all that kind of stuff. Here, isn't it, there isn't it over there? Well, this is the one from the center. Yeah. I don't know where the end is for this side. Oh, there it is. Okay. I found it. I thought I saw it. Okay. So yeah, that's, it's, it's not a whole lot to say about this. It's, it's continuing. I think I have maybe another, um, three or four, uh, pieces to do with this, maybe something like that before I can go ahead and do the infamous picking up of stitches so I can do the next strip. And I don't know why it's different for me to do a strip than it is to do blocks, but it is. Just... Laura says that it, we all know it's going to be a long scarf. <laughs> it's already a long scarf. And that, that that's what it's going to be. If it's a long scarf, I'm going to give it to her and she'll have to wear it. <laughs> well, she can pretend it's the Doctor Who scarf. Yeah. So that's really all I have to say about this. I mean, this is fun. I'm enjoying this. It doesn't have to be done at any time soon. And I can just... I can just kind of relax with it. And one, I think once I learn to pick up the stitches, then this will go pretty quickly because I won't be dragging my feet. Right. It's just, and I'm not, I'm not really dragging my no, feet. No, you I'm want just, long enough. I mean, why well, make an afghan that's not co cover you nicely? Right. And I'm not sure if this is going to be an actual afghan if I'm going to put it on the bed. Right. Because that's the other thing is that one thing that this doesn't have over the squares is you can always add more squares. Mm hmm you pretty much have to decide ahead of time what the length of this is. Yeah. Because, was that? That's Davina. Oh, okay. Um, Davina is finishing up the bathroom. So if it's if it's not as long as you'd like it to be, if you decide it's not as long as you'd like it to be after you finish your strip, you kind of are still stuck with it. Yeah, I, I'm i going to make it, I don't care about the length too much. The, I mean, the I'm not worried about the width. The width can be changed. Yes. The length is another thing. And I, the only way that you might be able to change the length if you decide to make the... Right, if you change which is the width and which is right, the length. Right, right. But... Don't, I don't like necessarily stripes that go sideways for a blanket. Right, um, but... <laughs> but you can do it if you need to. Exactly. So... so um, but yeah, so this is this is where I'm at right now. And I, I really need... I should probably... What do you mean? You don't like stripes that go sideways for a blanket. It's like how yours, all your blankets are. No, they're not. They're up and down. It's just, that's the way I've done them anyway. They may be laying sideways. But, oh, okay. Uh, I guess it also depends. Because I a lot of crochet them, ones. I, no, I've done, I've done granny square ones and all that kind well, of stuff. I'm, you don't make a whole ton of granny square ones. Um, I, if you look at my blankets, they're not, um, they're not meant to be long wise. I mean, they're not, not meant to be uh, way... They're shorter across the top. They're not. They're not wide. They're shorter across the top, which means the stripes will be going up and down. Okay. The, because I because I don't like to do the long yeah. chain. Yeah. Because I don't like to do the foundation chain. Foundation chain makes me crazy. So. Well, you don't have to necessarily do a foundation chain if you're just. It depends on which way you like your stripes going because you can have them across here and not have a foundation chain if you just do. X amount, and then you do all one big block, and then you change the next big block, and well, that's a different thing. I mean, what I I do, I was I was doing actual stripes. Oh, okay. Because I was talking about the big blocks that I haven't done a look big like block. stripes. I haven't done a big block. I've done big stripes, like big wide. Yeah, know, yeah, that's what I'm talking like about. Like four out, like four inch stripes, but I haven't done like that's blocks. What I, no, I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Well, that's not blocks. That's just stripes. Because crochet crochet stripes are are larger by necessity, I think, than than knitted. You don't get very many thin stripes with crochet unless you're just doing one row, depending on depending on what stitch you're using, you know? Right. So next is 
in my uh, Clover Bird Birds on a Wire bag. Didn't work a whole ton on this, just got it to the point where I needed to. This is Sweetie the Snake Donut. Not that you can tell <coughs> that it's a snake donut. Right now it's just a you know green bluey green bluey donut without the uh, icing. I was gonna start the icing. <laughs> it's not even a donut yet. It's a uh, it's a yeah, it's a donut. It could be the same. Um, it looks like a uh, play ring, a, a, a teething ring. It, it's a donut. It's like um, a teething ring. But I was going to start the icing, but I didn't feel like doing the chain around and then having to... All oh, right. It's not, it's, not, it's not the one you hate. It's just that Is it I, surface, cr uh, surface crochet? No. You are creating a different thing like you did oh, for the donut itself. Okay. Uh, I didn't feel like chaining in a circle and then going around. It's not like doing a magic ring. I have my thing I do for the magic ring, but because it's open in the center, mm -hmm. I just have to pay attention a little bit more and I didn't feel like it, so I didn't start the icing for yet. I have it all in here. I mean, I think, let's see, that's my main, just in case I need it for a different part. Snake tongue. <laughs> That'd be fun. This is your yarn. I you know. Um. Oh, I think this might be... There's some little triangle parts mm -hmm. along oh, the, the tail and... Like the little spots or squares or... You know. they're, they're actually shaped like triangles. Kind yeah, no, of, no, no, I, I understand. Yeah. I, I'm just saying they're, they're like scale things. You'll see it for um, sometimes like rattlers mm -hmm. where they'll have just a section that's almost like a piece of cake taken out. This, I think, is my icing. I'm pretty sure this is my icing. Yeah. So, icing is green to this blue green and then I have this as the accent and this is the pink tongue so there's very your cool. snake very cool um, but yeah I just didn't get any farther because I didn't feel like starting the icing at that point in time because the way this is put together is just a little bit interesting and once I finished stuffing it I was like yeah I I'm gonna go you know knit on a sweater now <laughs> yeah so a little bit loose there possibly oh well, no one's gonna care once I've tacked down for the icing right it's not like that people are playing with this snake he's gonna sit next to my mugs or something mm -hmm. with the other donut the with the triceratops triceratops is cute <laughs> with the triceratops you have the bear mm -hmm. um, and then I have my mug and my strawberry donut I so. about your strawberry donut mm -hmm. I already did twice twice so it's your turn okay Let's just Finish the stitch here. There. Yeah, strawberry donut was the first one. Mm -hmm. um, he was, or she rather, was meant to be a companion to the mug. Right, I remember that. Uh, and then I, then Laura got me the donut book, and I'm planning on making my way through uh -huh. slowly, but I'm making my way through. I'm making my way. Yeah, that's back what I was thinking of. I'm working babe. my way back. Is it working? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Put this back in the center where it won't get me all annoyed. There we go. I didn't realize that for this sock, I must have accidentally decided to work center pole. Be right. Because um, I thought I was just getting tangled. I couldn't figure out why. I'm like, oh, this was center pole. So I managed to wrap the other in such a way that would get tangled. Well, have you ever have you ever done something where you start it like one way and then you put the project away and then you pick it up again and then you go from the other way? <laughs> It only works if I cut the yarn for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, in which case, yes, I've done that. But I was kind of surprised. I'm actually enjoying the fact that my yarn's not rolling all over the place because it's in center pull. Right. So that's kind of nice. The only thing I don't like about center pull it does collapse. It collapses on itself. It collapses. Yeah. But if you really wanted to, then you could rewind it. Right. But I don't want it to collapse on itself. <laughs> I just want it to behave itself. Because <coughs> yarn shouldn't behave at all, right? It just should be. <coughs> Oh, um, there we go. Let me just put this away. Davina picked out this color for, you know, I, she gets a kick out of picking it out. So she picked it out to just kind of, so that's the one she wants. So that's the one it was. I may have to start weaving in because I can't stand this Yeah. all over the place. And you will regret it later if you don't. Yeah. Let me see here. Trust me. Okay, so that's in there like that. Thirsty. Let's see here. Okay, now, my next one is... Did you need me to get your water off the machine? No, I'll be all right. Thank you. Um, in my large silver shed 
actually I think this is the extra large Silver Shed USA 10 year pot anniversary bag is my spring flowers baby blanket from the Sarah Bell scarf pattern by Sarah Sweethearts and I'm using a G hook with this and I made a little bit of progress on this Let's see I really like the way this yarn works up. This is ice yarn that was given to me by Kara. And I really like this, Kara. Thank you very much for thinking of me. It looks to me like a garden. A, yeah, just a spring flowers garden. Thank you, Ty. Yeah. Um, I, this was outside. I have my, uh, the treadmill and all the machines we have are in the back room there. So Ty is closer to it, so she got it for me. Thank you, that's better. Yeah. So yeah, the ice yarn looks like this. I'm still on the first skein, but this is a lot of fun to work with, and um, it looks really pretty. It's a very nice, light, airy kind of spring-summer blanket for those babies who are born in the spring and summer. And you know, you need those kind of blankets too. You know, I think I said last time we were talking about this blanket that both my girls were born in Texas, and Davina was in the spring, which meant it was hot. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have anything like this. I had to buy something because my mother-in-law, the blanket she made, which was beautiful. Um, was worsted weight, double crochet, right. and it was heavy. So and I could, red heart. I could, acrylic, yeah, so. I couldn't use it for um, for the girls because for for Davina because um, it was just too hot. I had to wait till we got into the winter time, which was fine. It was still usable. It was just I couldn't use it right away like I wanted to. Right for Davina, for Talia, I could because it was you know January and, and it actually snowed. <laughs> actually, it kind of snowed. It iced. She we had an ice storm when she was born. Yeah, in Texas. In Texas. Mm-hmm in the first, the second week of January, third week of January, third week of January. Yeah. January was a bad month in uh, Texas, <laughs> about for that three week period. But yeah, that's all I have to say about this. Cause, cause I was born that, that's why it was a bad uh, time period in Texas during that period. Yeah. Makes sense to me. Okay. So next <laughs> is in my Silver Shed USA. Um, this is the medium sized 10 year anniversary, pot anniversary bag. Um, these are my Rice Krispie socks. The pattern is Not Just Boring Boot Socks by Corinne Walcher. I'm using Undead Yarn Sport, 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, and the, col and the colorway Snap, Crackle, and Oh Crap Pop. Um, this, sorry, is, um, you know, I'm making my way through it. Um, it's a fun pattern. I've been making quite a few of these, so not a whole lot to say about it. I do enjoy how it's working up. It's a bit un unlike my other ones. Yeah, pretty. Um, like I think what I was going to say is I don't think Heidi carries this colorway. I mean, this uh, base anymore. Mm -hmm. Not the werewolf base, is it? That werewolf base this is, is not werewolf. Too. Werewolf is a rough base. Yeah. That's a worsted base, too. Yep. yep. Uh, this is, um, I actually don't remember the name of this base. Hold mm -hmm. on. I think I have it in here. This is a witch base. All right. Mm -hmm. I think I had one of hers in the witch base. Yeah. And I have a couple of skeins. No. Yes. Yes. No, no, it's just one skein. That's right. Cause I can do, I might have another one somewhere, but this yarn, I can do two of Corinne Walter's not just boring boot socks. Uh, I can do two of them if, as long as I do a seven inch leg. So two of them in my size with the seven inch leg, still with enough left over, left over for your blanket. Mm -hmm. So. Make a cute woodland creature. Yes, it would. But there you go. That's, that's that. That's all I have to say about that? Yes. All right, let me just get this one more stitch over so it's not just pulling the edge of my blanket here because that would be a bad thing this is a nice acrylic to work with it's there are some that are decent know, to work with yeah I mean it's not overly soft necessarily, now usually they have some sort of wool blend to them not usually the ones that are nice I oh, the ones that are nice yeah yeah uh, okay let me just I don't think that the one we like so much by Lion Brand does I can't remember. Okay. Lime Brand has a couple we like mm -hmm. um, that have similar colors. Yeah. Okay. In my Blue Universal Studios bag, 
is my virtual hugs shawl from the scrap shawl pattern by Anastasia Sattel. This one is going to Laura concert and I've made some progress on this because this is the one I wanted to work on. So you can see I've got quite a bit of this yeah, color yeah. in. Um, let's see if we're not going to have to. Some of these yarns will felt on themselves without too much trouble so I'm trying to. Yes, your it. alpaca does that trying to make sure that it doesn't do that here because I really don't want to have to cut the yarn and reattach. Yeah. Just, I'll show it to you as soon as I can get to the point where I can pull it out without tightening this knot. Uh, poop doodles. Let's see here. There we go. Okay. okay. Um, partially. I, I don't even know how it does this sometimes. It it's looks a, like you've got, hold on. Well, careful, careful. You've got multiple. I do have multiple. There we go. So, hold on. And we just need to, and so, where's this color? That is. Because once we find the ball for that color, we can fix it. That's this one. I think that's this one. Does that have this light blue? Yeah, that's this one. See? Okay, so... Okay, so that takes care of this one, because this one's going to be used again. Yeah. It's still attached. Oh, okay. Well, that's also part of your problem. You have one yeah. that's still attached. It's going to tangle more. That one goes here. Now, this one is the one I'm using. Okay. But, yeah, that's part of why you're having a tangling problem, is you've got two multiple yarns attached. Okay, so. so you can see this one now. You can see it's growing quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Can you see the bottom? I can't really see through the shawl. Yeah, they can see the bottom. Um, and this... Um, one on the bottom is a dragonfly fiber yarn. I bought it at the last fiber festival that we attended. And I just didn't know what I was going to do with it. It's just so pretty that I wanted it. Um, I've kind of gotten away from that a little bit, but... Yeah. Um, now, great not being around the yarn fumes helps. Yeah, it does. Well, like I, I think I'm pretty much done with yarn festivals and things like that. Yeah. Unless Mrs. Helm decides she wants to meet me there or something... Um, I don't think I'm going to go. Right. Uh, I just, it's not, the experience for me was having Talia go with me. Right. I mean, it was fun with my husband as well, but I was still kind of constrained, even though it lets me get exactly what I want. It, he, but it, you, it's, it's not, I, I feel like I'm taking him away from things that, you know, he would rather be doing. It's not his, he, he does it because he loves me and I appreciate it. I just It's also like any, um, addict, you don't want someone watching you indulge yeah. in your, uh, yeah, but this is so. I think I think I might have the end of this row that I can do with this, and then I'm gonna have to. Um, it's binge buying. A little bit, yeah. Because like you, I go there with the idea that I know I'm going to buy. Yeah, but does that, does that really happen? That I know I'm gonna buy. Yeah, <laughs> but does it? Do you know you're gonna buy for X Y Z project? No, I didn't say I was buying. Oh, okay. I, I know I'm gonna end up buying something that. You know, and I got better as time went by because mm -hmm. I didn't need as much. It was not new anymore, and then I started dyeing yarn. So it was like, mm -hmm. well, do I really? I had to watch out for the bags. Yes. Um, especially if they had owls on them because I don't have any owl bags. <laughs> I don't have any owl bags at all. Christina did not make me two owl bags. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> now you might not have had one of them at that point, but you mm -hmm. had at least mm -hmm. one. Christina spoils me rotten of hers. Yeah. Um. So yeah, she. I have. I got this yarn at that last fiber festival, I think it was, and I didn't know what I was going to do with it. I think I thought I was going to make a toy with it or something. But, Possibly. Because um, that's what I don't know usually what it ends up being. So Especially at that point. At that point. It was just like, oh, well, automatic toy because I want, I want the yarn. I want the yarn, yeah. Never mind that it's got silk in it or... <laughs> right, right. It was this just, one doesn't, but... Uh, it was just, I want, I have. Yeah, it, it was um, yarn fumes that just kind of took over. Addled so, the brain. Addled the brain, yeah. So That and the fact that we knew that Dragonfly was closing down. So Was that around the time Dragonfly was closing? It was the last time we went. So Co Okay, because um, I know that I did pick up some things I might not have otherwise for sure picked up because I wanted to make sure that I grabbed some from her and from Hobbly... Hobbly Hoy? Hobbly. Yeah. Yeah, Hobbly Hoy. I do have one of Hobbly Hoy's yarn. She does pretty yarn. Yeah. I didn't get one of hers because I, she didn't do the heavier weight yarn, but I did get some more of Marigold Jen's before she stopped. Yeah. I know I picked up, mm -hmm. I think I picked up minis for Marigold Jen. Mm -hmm. 
but yeah, yeah uh, Jenny was fantastic um because I actually think I have some of them, some of them set aside for heels and toes mm -hmm. but yeah I don't really have a lot to say about this except that I'm moving along and I you know I've got you know yarns in here that we'll see where they end up in here but um and I think this is probably I don't know not quite halfway it's uh it's it, I, the fact the fact of the matter is that this grows very quickly as you saw by the one I that I just started I said did one sitting yeah before my shoulders started bothering me I had to stop so it's 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 something that grows very quickly so I'm hoping that this one will be finished in the near future so I can send it off right because well yeah. you do one of those in one sitting I know you've done cerebells in one sitting no no I, I the those the one I showed the the gray one that I showed. I did that. Oh, one the, did the section? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I heard it as being like you did the shawl on one sitting. I was like, no, no unless, I, be... unless I pull an all nighter, all day thing. Because that's too big of a shawl. Yeah, it depends on how you know how big. Right, but I mean, I can't see making if you're not gonna make it big. No, me either. This is like like this is a virtual hug. This one, yeah. so it's it's meant to be, uh, you know, big and comforting and not like this little small thing. Yeah. Because I, I just I like my shawls big and comfortable. And this one, you know, Laura likes them that way too, so. Yes. We'll see how she likes this one. Okay, so my turn. Um, in my PHN Faces Bag by Silver Shed USA. Project name is Frozen. Pattern is Fisherman's Hoodie by Mari Dembro. And I guess her business name is Mari Sweaters. Uh, I'm using Shepherd's Wolf in the colorway Frosty Blue. The good thing is if I run out of yarn, this is really easy to get a hold of. You still have to watch the dye lots. Yes, but I have enough, um, so it shouldn't be a problem. And I'm not terribly concerned as, as with dye lots. Oh no, it's very slightly different. How will I ever cope? Uh, if it's a gift, you might have to be a little more careful. Yeah. I was blessed with mine. That was acrylic that did that. That was it. Was it looked like it got either darker or lighter in yeah. the center, and then out. It you know. Because you don't expect acrylic to do that. No, you don't. So, um, I'm not sure if you can see. The patterning has started. It's yeah. very, it's very uh, hard to see at this point. Yeah, yeah. I've only just started a little bit of the right, cabling. Right here, right here. Yeah. yeah. And this one is a pieced sweater. Uh, all of her seem to be. She's the one who does crocheting slip stitch, probably. Because mm -hmm. she doesn't specify. Uh, slip stitch as a seam because she says it's a sturdier seam and uh, she just likes it better. So I'm going to be doing that to put all my uh, back together with the um, sides because this doesn't have a technical, f will be a right front, left front because it's not a, um, a pullover. So yeah, um, this was, I like the, we the wheel. I like the feel of this yarn. Mm -hmm. I always have. Um, this is a non-superwash, but it's a v very soft non-superwash. Yeah. I've used Fisherman's, uh, not Fisherman's, uh, I've used Shepherd's Wool in multiple projects. Um, this one was the one I used in the one pullover I do own, uh, the red one. Mm -hmm. and Melskis. Melskis, yeah. I think that's the only time I've used this in a sweater. I've used this in hats. Uh, a couple color cats, but I haven't seen him. What? What did I say? So uh, using hats. Yes, I was about to say something that made no sense. You didn't say it. You just. Oh, I didn't. No. Okay. Um. Uh -huh. Sorry. I. Yeah. But yeah, I um, I've used this in hats. I've used this in one other in a pullover sweater. I don't think I've used it in anything else yet. Um, I did a flip the colors, color uh, um, hat, I believe. I don't think I kept them. I think I gave them away. Um, one was pink and yellow. Or maybe one was pink and, I did pink and yellow, pink and blue. And I didn't keep either of them. Did you give one to Davina or did you give one to me? I forget. I think I might have one of them. You might have one of them. It was more because I just wanted to knit them, and there was a really pretty pink in Shepherd's Wool, and I just wanted to knit with it. And it was a really light blue, like a sky blue. And I just got enough to make my hats, 
and to flip colors. Um, I also got a really butter yellow, or, or it was like a sunshine mm -hmm. yellow, actually. I remember the yarn. Uh, I think I still have that one in something. I can't remember. Because I knit several colorwork hats with this, but I don't think I own them all still. I think I gave away mm -hmm. quite a few of them. Most, it was mostly because I wanted to knit with the yarn because I enjoy shepherd's wool. Sometimes that happens, and then if you don't want the project, you give it to somebody. Exactly, and it's a hat. It's not, and I wanted to color work practice. Mm -hmm. um, I think they were all patterns by the lady who did Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I think you're right. Pat, uh, pattern for us. I think you're right. I can't remember her name like right, right now because it's been a while since I knit one of her patterns. Right. She was good, though. She was. I Very nice person. a black, red, and <clears throat> white one. She was from England, recently. wasn't she? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh she had the Yorkshire hat pattern. She, I think she was from Yorkshire. And she did our... Um, she did her line with her wardrobe. wardrobe. Mm -hmm. um, and she just had a lot of pretty designs. Very, very talented. Yes, very talented. Okay. But, yeah, that's that one. All right, let me find my thing to hold my stitches. That was in a different sweater, but th this one built up so quickly. I mean, granted, I'm not doing the full sweater full around that is flat, so it's going to work up quicker because there's fewer stitches. Yeah, let me just try not to get all tangled up as I put this back. All right, my last project, I think it's my last project. It should be. Um, I'm going to catch this. The other day I caught one of my projects in the zipper. Oh, yeah. It's like, yeah, that's not fun. You might see me stretching a little. My shoulders bother me. So I'm trying to sit up better so I don't do something to it. Now, this project was originally the Amigurumi bunny, the flat rag doll. I tore it out because I didn't like the way it was turning up. And uh, I started the puppy, which is um, this one. He's cute. Now, I may pull it out, not because I want to not, not because I don't want to do it, but because I might, I found another hook that might work right. better. Because um, right now, it's a little bigger hook than I think. Yeah. Uh, but I think Especially it, when you want to stuff it. I think it'll be okay, but... I mean, it should be fine. You might see a little bit of the stuff in yeah. here that is a little bit. But I don't think it'll be a problem necessarily yeah. for this one. But I'll know the next time to use the yeah. other hook, which is this one. This is a, um, I think I found out it's an E hook. And I think it would be better than this one, which I think is a G. And if you find that you don't like <sighs> how it looks with the G, uh, you could always... Start over. Yeah, I can we? I can just redo the head. It's not yeah. a problem. It's not like this is something that. Oh my gosh, I have to crochet. I can't stand it. I don't yeah. want to do it. It's it's fine. And right now I'm on. Um, let's see, I'm on. And it's not going to discourage you the same way when you sometimes get with, with knitting where you're not as comfortable with it. So right. if you had to start all over again. You're not likely to restart. And all I'm doing right here, yeah, unless my hand is hurting. Right. But then even if I did that, I, I'm not afraid to restart it later. And this one, I'm just right now doing. You know, going round and round, and you know, before I have to decrease or whatever. So, I like the color for the dog. This is gonna be cute for the dog. And it if is. I if I run out of yarn in terms of this color, I'll just use the white as well. You know, for you know, because I'm doing the head right now, so I can do the body with the white. You know, white body with, you know, I, I can do color work. Yeah, <laughs> I can I can adjust it, so it's not gonna be a problem. I can find the stitch here so I can mark it and it's not cooperating. Is that it for you? Yep. Okay, let me go ahead and make sure I marked out this row. So, my final one is in, you said there was an extra large, right? Yeah, uh, mine was extra large. Yeah, I think I, if yours is the same, it's an extra I'm large. I'm guessing so. So, my extra large uh, PHN 10, po 10 year potiversary bag um, this holds the Project Buttercup sweater, and it's the boxed and cables pattern by Mari Dembrow. Not terribly far along. Um, and it's a very simple sweater, which is all I really wanted. For one thing, it'll make the yarn that much, look that 
will be very nice for the yarn. There's enough th enough patterning to keep my interest going, but not so much that uh, it'll take front or s front and center. And I am using squash blossom. Um, Yowza squash Yowza from Miss Babs, the colorway squash blossom. And I'm on the ribbing. This is the back. Um, it's another one that you are working flat and then have to seam. I think that's just the way she does her sweaters. So yeah, I have what's I have a partial skein in here and I have two full skeins. So it should be enough. If not, I can pick up a an extra to fill in the gap and then you know save that yarn. I mean I know I'm gonna need to get at some point another full yowza to do the a hood and then whatever I have left from either an extra yowza for this or whatever because it doesn't take just one yowza but if I have extra left over from the sweater mm -hmm. then that will be helpful right so that sweater has a hood this sweater does not have the hood that's the other one okay. the blue one that has okay. the hood um, this one I saw first actually, and I was just like, oh, look, comfy sweater. Mm -hmm. And then that one I saw second, I was like, oh, look, comfy sweater with big hood. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that one I saw on her website. This one I saw on Lovecraft. Right. So yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Okay. Right, let me see here. That's the last project, right? Yeah. And we both have our foes. Right, let me just finish this because I know you're going to want to show yours last. Uh, let's see here. Like that. There we go. Okay. Um. Move this out of the way. I don't think anyone's gonna be surprised by either of those. Okay, this is in my Plumberbird Pink and Purple Teacups bag. And this is my um, comfy cozy shawl from the scrap shawl pattern for Anastasia's Attel. So it's finished. Are you going to put anything else in that bag? The other one maybe? Um, I might move the other one into there. Just for more space? For more space. But so you can see this is really a yeah, very that's nice. big shawl. You should be able to wear it with your outfit too. There you go. Um, it's quite a good size. Um, yeah, they're not going to be able to see it when you stand up, so, so it's just going to be... But you can just tell with the yeah. length of the sleeves and stuff like that. So I really like the way it turned out. And you can see it's a very different feel, mm -hmm. even though it's, you know, very similar in size, uh -huh. same pattern. It's just the different yarns chosen give it very definite. Yours has definitely more of a teal feel, mm -hmm. which fits. That's one of... You really love teal. Mm -hmm. And I was working yeah. on this in the doctor's office, one of the doctor's offices, I think it was, and a lady came up to me and said, I just love that teal. That's such a pretty color. I'm a teal person. I think I was working on this color. Yeah. Um, just before I added, or maybe I was adding this one. I forget. Anyway, she liked the teal. So, um, so yeah, I like teal as well. But, yeah, it's finished. It's a huge shawl. I love it. I can just... Now you have one you actually wear. Yeah. And you also, the other one, when you made the acrylic one, you didn't make it very big, I think. That it wasn't as big as I wanted it to be. Yeah. Um, I I hadn't yet determined how much I... And it, it, it's you were enough. also fairly new to testing. I don't think you realized that you could adjust things in certain yeah. areas. Yeah. So. Okay. So, um, mine, let's see. Let me get untangled from this. Excuse me, guys. I'm sorry. I got up. I don't know. I think I, I was telling Ty. I don't think I slept well last night because I had very active dreams. <laughs> so. so this one um, is my Canary Song, which is the uh, Comfort Yourself with Your Music uh, pattern by Joanne Johnson from Little Women Knits. We're calling this a sweater because it's got the sleeves, but it falls like a shawl. Mm -hmm. So it provides that little bit of arm warmth while still, like I said, falling like a shawl. Very nice. Uh, That's pretty. So it's not supposed to be a shawl collar, like as in like going up here and you fold right. it. It's, you, you can move it up to cover your neck a little bit, but. It's basically a shawl with sleeves. Yeah, and, and most of the time, depending on how you're sitting, you might not even see the sleeves. You can see the back a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
it's actually a nice a nice back mm -hmm. it is very pretty um so yeah this is very comfortable i was concerned at first that maybe i wouldn't like because it's kind of weird under the arms but it's not how you're going to be wearing this most of the time you're not going to be like flapping all over the place <laughs> uh i can fly you know how in um the animated series a lot of times at night when they'd have them have the flaps underneath and then yeah. you would just like yeah. jump off the yeah. building yeah. and yeah. it would catch so him glide. yeah usually in the comps he doesn't do that usually he just jumps and then later on does his uh a uh, little grapple gun thing after he's sufficiently scared Commissioner Gordon or yes. whoever. But, yeah, that's what it would be kind of like. That would be my, you know, glidey thing. Spider-Man does that, mm -hmm. actually. I think he does it more in the comics. Excuse me. Um, because he doesn't have, well, I mean, he has his webs, but he, it's like webbing underneath, mm -hmm. depending on which costume he has. But, yeah. Well, Batman has it on his, too, on, on the, and if you go into the, um, it's more of his cape that does He it. uses his full cape yeah. for it. Mm -hmm. And also, that's a theatrical effect. Yeah, it is. But it also... It's yeah. Also, no. he, has, he has also, when he's falling from building or if he's jumped from building, he will use... Yes. Yeah. Um, he will... It's he does, not quite the same glide because it doesn't have the same where it's at. It's a little bit more... Well, it depends on how he's holding it. It does. It also he, depends it, on how much of a frame he has on that... I don't think he has a lot. Of I don't frame. think so. His arms are the frame. Yes, his arms are the yeah. frame. Um, because that's a. I know it's a heavy material because when Dick wore it, he complained that it was like fighting in a Kevlar bow, uh, ball gown or something, <laughs> because he said it was so heavy. heavy. Mm -hmm. And he's a very um, acrobatic fighter, so he's like, "How did he move in this thing?" <laughs> okay. But anyhow, yes. So I'm not going to be gliding off of buildings. So you're not going to see this. It's going to look just like a nice shawl and then you'll be like oh yeah there's sleeves too mm -hmm. um so i do like the way it's set i would i do that's why i had to start the other one as a sweater though because i don't consider this a sweater mm -hmm. um this is very much of a shawl which is great it has sleeves i consider it a sweater but it's not a sweater it's like a step between you have my um uh, one with this colorway that has the green and the blue that's a true shawl mm -hmm. uh the on the forest floor Actually, that's one I added extra rows to make it longer. Um, then I have this one, which is a step between a shawl and a sweater. Then I have the sweater that I've started. Then later on, I'll do the hood. I have the yarn for the socks. I think after that point, because I already have a hat. And I have two hats. I have one with the color work, too. So after that, I should have all the accessories, unless I discover another accessory I want in this mitts, coat. Mitts, mitts. You're right. Fingerless mitts. But I'll probably have finger enough left over from the hood to make fingerless mitts when I get to that point. So, yes, my goal is to have all the things in this colorway. So whatever, someday I could just be like, oh, I'm going to just go all out and wear them all and matchy match. Just because you have all that jewelry doesn't mean you have to wear it all at the same time. Well, I couldn't, I could wear the shawl and the sweater together, but I wouldn't wear the shawl and the sweater together. And I couldn't wear the sweater and the sweater together. Of course, if you go to a fiber festival, you can wear everything together. <laughs> this, this would look really weird to wear with a shawl or with a sweater. But the thing is, is that... Because um, the sleeves wouldn't work with well, it. Well, you know, maybe not with a sweater, but with a shawl it could. Mm -hmm. um, in... I remember especially when you went to Maryland, it was freezing, and we just had everything. I mean, Yes, that everything. was the last year we went. No, it was... The, it was um, I was already using the cane. It was you earlier than that because um, it was just cold, and we it was maybe yeah. we had a couple years that were really cold because I think the last time was really cold. Now, granted, I was already starting to use the cane. I was already starting to. I had just started using. I had to purchase. I remember to get a cane. Um, Could I use it now? Yeah, it was, it was actually like a stick that I covered with like. She covered it with owl tape. Yes, so it's mine now. <laughs> but a, I mean, it's a walking stick. I was looking for something for support because mm -hmm. I was having so much trouble. Uh, I had to push you to do that. Yes. Uh, but she, she, because she got another cane, a real cane afterward, I inherited I use it when I go for walks. Yeah. Well, yeah. it wasn't the be best support for normal, because I don't think I ever took the rollator or the wheelchair to Maryland. I think that after... I don't think you ever took the re uh, wheelchair. I think you might have taken the rollator once. I don't think I ever got to. I think that we stopped going. Because I um, went I from know. rollator to wheelchair really quickly. I know you did, yeah. Um, I could have sworn you took it once, but that doesn't I make took it, it to, um, once to Shenandoah, mm -hmm. at least once to Shenandoah, and I took it, took the wheelchair once to Shenandoah. That was fun. Oh my gosh, it was awful. <laughs> I nearly tipped at least 
a couple times. It was really hard for me to push, to help you push with that because it was so well, the, uneven. The, the, yeah, it, it was hard enough with the rolly. I should have known it would be worse with the wheelchair. That one lady who had the awesome wheels, yeah, that yeah. was a cool couple. She had a, the equivalent of an off-road vehicle of wheelchair. Yeah, she she got a custom design one, and that looked like it worked nicely. Yeah. Okay, but so now what? Now um, that leads us on to any shop news. I haven't listed my other stuff yet. I just haven't had the chance really I I'm not sure we've had a lot of appointments to be quite we've frank with you it's, it's been a lot of appointments so I've not been by the time I get home I have to catch up on things I missed and then by the time I catch up on things I missed my husband's home and we get ready for family time and I just haven't had a chance to dye any yarn I haven't even dumped out the last dye stock which has been sitting there for a week oh really yeah the the it's not it's exhausted dye stock yeah. it's not like dye stock in bottles it's it's you know, I did a certain kind of dye method, and it's just sitting there exhausted. I just haven't had a chance to, because I have to go back and forth because it's too heavy for me to lift that big, like, I don't know, 24-gallon pot or whatever it is. It's huge with full of water, so I can't lift that to the kitchen, so I have to go back and forth. And I just haven't had the time or later the inclination, so I just haven't done that yet. I'm hoping to dye some yarn. Mike is taking Talia to an appointment on Thursday, so I'm hoping to get some yarn dyed then. Yeah. And stuff like that, but I just, I'm, I'm really trying hard to figure out where I'm losing so much time because it's just, and I know where some of it is, and I'm working on getting rid of that, and then some of it that I picked up I can't get rid of because it's something that's important. So I just have to figure out what maybe there's something I have to not do on a certain day so I can get some yarn dyeing done because otherwise I'm about to close my shop, but I don't want to close my shop. So, you know, um, but I hope to have Melissa, Maleficent in the shop in the next few days. Did you see that you had several suggestions? Yes, I saw them. I don't, I haven't seen any new ones since yesterday, but mm -hmm. um, today is the last day for that. So if you have suggestions, put it in episode, I think I said 506, because this is 508. So 506, uh, when you see this podcast, put it in 506 and then we're done because this is the last, this is the cutoff. Okay, right. so you need to put it in 506 or you can put it, uh, in PHN in the 506 thread there, but it needs to be done in the next 24 to 48 hours. Right. Okay. Because then we're done. Oh, um, so my buttons were delivered. Okay. So please do that. And it will be pulled by random number generator. It will not be based on whether or not I use the name because I may not use anybody's name. It might just be, it might just be like, Oh, okay. Thanks for the ideas. And, and now you've got my, my brain percolating right, or, exactly. or whatever. It's more just for participation. And those who participated, I wanted to say thank you. And sometimes you can also like, we didn't use the exact name of mm. people's suggestions for pen needles. We took aspects. And what I'm going to do is I am going to grab what's out there because buttons do relate to the sweaters that I've been knitting. Um, I'll get it. I'm there. It's just, I, okay. I'll get it. So, um, yeah, I went and got, now mom, your owl ones aren't there because they're coming from the UK. I found some really nice wood buttons with owls on it for mom. They're not shaped like owls. They just have like painted owls on there and they just, they have a kind of vintagey look without looking like for kids. Um, and she was really excited to have that on her owl sweater. So those are coming in, but they're coming in from the UK. I'm kind of snobby about my buttons. I really like them to stand. Buttons for me are, they can't just sort of blend in. They have to be a statement in and of themselves. And I prefer a more vintage look. Um, I don't really care for what's in like Michael's or Hobby Lobby or whatever. I want it to have somewhat of a sheen to it. I would like it to uh, just have a very, very much of a certain look. So, um, so I have several different kinds of buttons coming from Etsy. Some of them for definitely for certain sweaters, some of them just to build up my button collections. I've worked through a lot of my nice buttons that I had picked up from Maryland Sheep and Wool. I used to visit somebody in Maryland Sheep and Wool and I would pick up like all she had of certain buttons. So I have like some left. Because it's Christmas time apparently. Well, I know some of those are for the shop. Well, one of these is mine, so just okay. hold on. Uh, some just of these, hold on there, Sparky. Some of these are, I know some things coming in for the shop. 
yours. Okay, that is... That's yours. This one's shop. That's yours. And this feels like might be yours as well. Yep. And I've got Renna's... Ooh, this feels like it's shop. I've got Renna's... Oh, no, um, my fun. Stash enhancement. I have Renna's thing in my... Okay, you tell me later. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have the thing that Renna gave us, and I'll open in just a second. So I don't think this one's shop. I think this one, although it feels a bit light for buttons. Let's see. This is Kelly Craft Supplies. Doesn't she have a nice way That's of... That's cute. Let's see. That's nice. That, she actually had to put effort into putting that together. <laughs> Oh, these are actually beads. These, oh, these are, are um, little flower. Oh, that's extra there. They're little rose oh, beads. Don't open them. I won't open This is just to give you an idea of yeah. what they look like. The little one extra, it looks like it's broken off. It isn't. This is possible Our Father beads. I'm thinking for like St. Therese rose wreaths. This won't work for the one I was going to possibly use it for, but this will be used. This will be used. This can be for Marian rosary. Um, yes. Because I was looking at several different flower our father beads because I had some ideas. Ooh. What? Okay, as soon as you finish, I'll say this. Well, I'm done with this one. Okay, Renna donated a bag, and I'll show you in just a second. It's from Knickknack Knick -knack Knits. Oh, okay. okay. So um, she says, Marlisha, your friend Renna purchased this as a giveaway on the podcast. I'd like to get the podcast code for 15% off. Ooh. Till July 31st. The code is PHC15. That's what it looks like to me, PHC15. Um, I've missed Zooming with you and hope all is well. Thanks, Nikki. Oh, so Nikki. Oh, okay. T is for you and your daughter. Nikki. I remember oh, Nikki. Nikki. Yes. Okay, thank you, Nikki. Thank you so much. Oh, I think she made that card. I think she did. Look at this beautiful little card. So, guys, we will put the code... We can't put it on the, we can't put it on YouTube. Well, anyone who can watch, we can repeat it and put it underneath because then you actually would have had to watch. It right, to and, then, see. and then you're a member. Right. Yeah. Um, but you can't. We can't like just put it on the description because then anyone who doesn't watch it can. Yeah. But if I remember to get to this part and, but let's re repeat again. It is. It's uh, uh, P H C, fifteen. Fifteen. So one five. Yeah. This is. Uh, Nikki, Nikki, that is so nice of Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and the tea for us. Thank you. Thank you. And then I got to show you this bag. It, the reason, like I said, that Renna has suggested maybe for the along the ends going into Christmas, and I have, absolutely agree. Look at this adorable bag. Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's okay, it's fun. Got, it's got the clear here, and it's got these happy little tree, Christmas trees. And you have to turn around so you can see the uh, minion. There's the minion. Oh, and she has some tea in there for the person as well. Can you see the minion in there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And there's a tea in there as well that will go with it. Nick Nat Knits, Nikki and Lisa. That's fun. Instagram, Nick Nat Knits. Uh, Shopify, Nick Nat Knits Co. by Shopify.com. So, yeah. Let's see. She might also have the code on here. Let's see. Okay, she didn't. I just want to make sure that we didn't have our. Code. Okay, if you want to find her on YouTube, she's Nick Nat Knits Podcast. Okay. And if you win this bag, you will also get that in writing. Yes, yeah, it's in the it's on a card in here. Yeah. So it's a very generous donation from Renna, and it's a very generous coupon code from Nikki. So, so if thank you. You're, you're, you're looking for something, a bag or something, then um, you know, check her out. Um, she has that. She has that lovely coupon code for for our podcast viewers, which is very very generous. We're very very appreciative. Thank yes, you, thank you, Nikki. Um, much appreciated. Let me just put this here. And this one, you can see what your project is. You're like, what's in that bag? Right. <laughs> okay, so let's put this in here like this. Okay, so I have. I'm not gonna open that one because that one I know for sure is some more. I, I had to fill out a couple of my um, crucifixes that I needed because um, mm -hmm. my Trinity crucifixes tend to be one of my more popular right. ones. Um, 
before we forget, this will probably be either the third quarter prize for the T and Tails, or it will be the prize for the dysautonomia. Right, because you want it before Christmas. You want it for, for your Christmas projects. Yeah, so, so we don't want to give it at Christmas time. So, Rena, that was a very good idea. Yes. And thank you for thinking thank you. of us. I am so happy with this. This is so sweet. It is. There we go. People are so generous. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Is. oh those are beautiful. So Isn't that, that is rosary. Beautiful? Is that Rita? Say Rita. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Catherine. Oh, this is nice. That's St. Anthony, isn't it? That is St. Christopher. Christopher. Yeah, can't That is nice. It is nice. Uh -huh. And that was Catherine Sweet. Catherine Sweet. Oh, for the... Yeah, I'll tell you that later. Yeah. Um, so, wow, this came fast. Um, that, that came really... I needed to give him a good review because that came nice and fast. And look at this, which came with it. St. Anthony, St. Christopher. I'm pretty sure it's St. Christopher, and I do... Yeah, let me see. He's carrying the shoulder of St. Christopher. Yeah. I do have a St. Christopher um, chaplet that I occasionally make. This would be like a super nice St. Christopher chaplet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because I've not had this nice um, some metal of your, Some of your suppliers really have nice add-ons. Yes, they do. This is a new supplier, and I will continue going to... I think he's a little bit more on the expensive side, but... Oh my gosh, yes. Mm -hmm. that one, He didn't just give me like a, a cheap little gimme. Well, it reminds me of your other lady who like, gives you... You the, mean the, like this lady? Yeah, is that the lady, the one who gave yes. me the centerpiece I have in my, my, my rosary? Yes, that's that's her. Let's see what goodie she gave this time. Since we already showed all the other rosary ones. Fragile. It's French. This is... Do you need the scissors? Yeah, I think so. I thought I could be able to just tear it apart with brute strength, but I overestimated my brute strength. You underestimated your brute strength? I overestimated. I can't find my scissors. There's the fragile. I'm not something over. You guys will be the first to hear it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's when I hit the second layer of tape mm -hmm. that I start running into problems. There we go. My hand's just watching this. Oh, hold on. Let me do this one. Okay, so she usually gives really good goodies. It's like Christmas with this lady. It is. Because she doesn't just give me one. She gives me, like, five. This is part of the reason I keep going to her. Um, and she always gives me this, light, this nice blue bag that I reuse. Yeah, I gave you back the other one. Yes, I, I, I and I, only, I don't use it for my... Shop. I use it for like gifts and stuff. So I got, oh, that's what I got some more of the, I got some of these. I only had one. Oh, the chalices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And here's, this is a smaller size of my Trinity crucifix. I have another place where I go for bigger ones. Um, and then this is, I only had one that I got for free. Of uh, These are just chalices. And then this one, I saw this. And this is beautiful. It's a Eucharistic one. Oh, that's nice. So I have to make this one. Because I, I had gotten an order for somebody's uh, First Holy Communion. Hopefully that made it. It's going to make it. Time. Ah, oh, here's here the go. goodies. Okay, these are extra. By the way, you get the Holy Family one. Oh, thank Holy, you. Holy Family, Holy Card. Oh, my gosh. She gave some nice goodies this time. It. Oh, isn't that beautiful? This is a centerpiece. Is that Our Lady of the Eucharist? Uh, no, it's got a baby Jesus there. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. I've never had one of the ones, this style of centerpiece before. You can see it's kind of small to see. So I think you put your... It's hard to your tell. Your cord... I think you put your cord here and here. And, and down at the bottom. And then down at the bottom. Um, I've actually never used... Oh, look at this one. You can almost claim this is Jesus' Master Way, Truth, and Life. Yeah, it's got the book. So the book. look at that. That's not a cheap uh, freebie. She does really nice... She's very This is the generous. first time I've tried this style because I've looked at this style several times. Oh, look at that. Yes. So this is the miraculous a, metal. A really pretty miraculous metal centerpiece. Like I said, these are all free. That's this is uh, Our Lady of Lords in a similar style to the one you. Right, but mine's more open. Yes. These are her thank you gifts. These are her free. Like, she's like, oh, thank you. Let me give you 20 other things. Now, to be fair, I have gone and purchased some of those 20 other things. Like, I I'm sure she makes money back, but the point is she's very generous. Yes. 
Uh, these are her more expensive ones, yeah. which is why I'm so shocked they're in there. I bet they're new. Um, I've seen several of these, and I've looked at them before, but I've... Oh, this is pretty. So it's got... It looks like it's Mary... Um, I was going to say Mary with Jesus and lamb, but Mary doesn't usually do a lamb. It's they say Agnes for a lamb, right? Yeah. I might be saying Agnes. I can't see it very well. I know she's carrying a lamb in one arm and baby Jesus in the other. I think that Agnes generally carries baby Je um, baby Jesus. I'll have to look it up. Yeah. Um, And then this is another Our Lady of Lords. But yeah, she gave me... The point is, because after that one freebie... Two, four, one, seven. Yeah, seven freebies and two... Plus the of, card. Plus the card. And two of them were high-end freebies. I'd say three of them. This one's high-end, too. Mm -hmm. So, yes. It's, so you got two very good suppliers. Yes. Um, it's it's like Christmas when I get an order from her, even though I, you know, spent money. I get I get nice stuff. And those are usually, like, one-timers or, like, oh, hey, you may or may not be able to get this again. But a lot of times she carries it again. Mm -hmm. It all depends on if it sells well. The one that you didn't have was the one I have in my centerpiece, which is absolutely gorgeous. Right. I think I can still, I possibly can pick it up. I just haven't looked for it. I absolutely love it. It's, it's just beautiful. Now the actual thing that, oh yeah, this is, I know what this is. Um, the beads, which is what I wanted to do. And I kept opening things and thinking it was beads and it's not. My knee was hurting earlier. Um, I think that's why I cut myself, because probably when I was doing the box. You guys get to see unboxing. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. This is long. So Sorry, guys. Buttons. Buttons. So these were a nice price. Um, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you for supporting my small business. This is not extra. This is just, it's got that little bit of a sheen to it. Mm -hmm. um, and I like larger. Oh, I like those, yeah. Larger button. And this is one of those ones that's nice. It can go to on just about any kind of sweater while still looking like it would look very good on this color. Um, but it would also look good on a blue. I think this one's a slightly larger version of that. Because I also have a tendency with certain sweaters is I like... Oh, it's a slightly different style, maybe? It's like a slightly different color. Oh, you're right. It might be a slightly different color. No, it's the same size. So... Um, Oh, I know what this is. I, this was one where it's similar, but if I got a rougher back, I could get a less expensive price. All oh, right. And it still works. Right. So I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll take the... Who's going to care what's on the back? I like it for the front. You could if you really wanted to for the front. I mean, if you want to do it more of a rustic kind yeah. of thing. And these were... And you could see all of them have that kind of look to it. I think that's kind of cool. Um, where it's just a little bit rustic in the back. And she's like, yeah, if you were willing to take my more rustic buttons in the back, you get a better price. I'm like, sure. I mean, can you imagine this on something that's kind of steampunky? Mm -hmm. or, or even um, maybe backwoodsy, you know? And her shop is... Let me look at her. Thank you. Um, oh, not there. Happy mail. Aw, she has a sticker on here that says Happy Mail just for you. Aw. That's cute. Okay, this is Ad Vintage. Because um, I went and I Googled, oh, not Google, Google works for Google. I searched on Etsy. I Etsy? I, uh, Etsy. <laughs> I searched on Etsy. 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 I searched on Etsy. She's two. For vintage buttons. And this was one of the ones that came up. I love, like I said, I love buttons with a sheen to mm -hmm. them. And uh, this, I think they describe this as a mother of pearl sheen. Mm -hmm. And generally, if I have a flat color button, it has to be nice somehow in the texture. Like mm -hmm. the, the big black buttons I have in my big yellow sweater, they have like grooves in them and they're huge. So it worked because it still was a statement. My, bu my buttons have to be a statement. Um, if they just blend into the sweater, they're not as fun. So I'm like... I'm with buttons the way some people are with boxes and things Me, like that. I boxes. mean, I like boxes too, boxes. but... And pads of paper and pens. I, in my hate, when I first started making sweaters, I knew almost right away I didn't want plain buttons. Right. And so whenever I see a cool button, now I, I, I don't go out to the fiber festivals anymore, so like my, button, my main button supplier was there. But now I have a larger... Mm -hmm field so if i find a style i like some places will probably have it 
The only thing is I have to make sure I get out a ruler and measure how big it says it is because I don't like really teeny buttons. Mm -mm. Now I do have, I think I have a couple smaller buttons coming in, which that that's fine. I mean, I will, I will find a use for them. Um, sleeves. Yeah. Or, so, or like you can find a use. You can make them decorative. You can. Hats. Yeah, you can find some sort of useful, or you might yes. have a sweater that's maybe a little bit lighter, like a fingering weight well, sweater. A lot of times, if you have a twin set sweater, it right. has the smaller, the more classic sweaters. Right, you you certain kinds of sweaters you do want, and these smaller buttons were definitely vintage. I and think even, even some of the smaller ones can have that mother of pearl. They can have that. Yes, you know, I uh -huh. like, I like some of the ones that are kind of classic, the white kind of sh shimmery, shiny white. Yes, yes. Um, but I so I have a couple of ones that. Uh, some of the vintage places I would go, it'd be like, yes, this button dated this year. I picked it up in a factory sale. So like you get a whole history of the button, <laughs> which is just so cool. Yeah. So yes, that is my, don't stick to my sweater, uh, sweater. This is my haul. You got more of the religious ones that I intended to show you simply because they came I, in. <laughs> well, it came in and also I wasn't sure what was buttoned and what was religious except for the um, supplier that I knew was religious. But once I showed the other guy who had freebies, I had to show her freebies mm -hmm. because... It wouldn't be fair. It wouldn't be fair that his freebies got shown and not hers. Uh, but yeah, this is beautiful card, Mom. It is. Uh -huh. I usually give either, either Mom the cards or Davina depending on what they are. Yeah. So make sure that we put Nikki's thing in here. Yes. Well, let me write a note to, because I learned some editing skills recently. Um, I've been doing book, booktube and just learned a little bit more about putting where to, how to put things in certain places. That that was not helpful at all. But how to put put something inside the yeah without having it cover the add whole a screen add a caption add a picture off to the side somewhere instead of just having it cover the whole screen which is what i used to do because i didn't know how to do that so um i need to come nick nat knits co dot my shopify dot com and one by three ten timestamp and I'll have this also at the code at one five three ten timestamp as well so I and I might just put it there because I know we talk about it here instead of searching the other mm -hmm, one mm -hmm. in case people didn't catch the first time right I mean we talk so, about it several times so. yeah so this is a good timestamp to do it because I know we're talking about it now very generous very yes. very generous thank you Rena thank you Nikki Yes, thank you very much. There we go. Let me just put circles. All right, we should probably think about stopping here because yeah, we're probably. close to two hours and we need to eat. But um, we don't have anything in terms of um, no. I don't think nothing. I don't think anything new happened personal. I I did have a diagnosis. I mean, not diagnosis, but it oh was, yes, and it's nothing. It's not, I don't think we need um, to go to personal to because nothing crazy. No, no. If I mean, if you don't want to hear it, you can go away. Go away, but, but you know, <laughs> I, it's not going to be anything super freaky freaky or anything so if you will say thank you for for joining us we hope yeah. to see you next week uh, do we have a zoom coming up this friday or a live stream yes okay so we have a live stream for those of you who are patreon if you are leaving give you a second have a good day thank you for joining us we'll see you next thank week you. hopefully now if you're here um just really quick i got my x-rays back the technician had originally said there was nothing on it when i got my thing back this is why you hit the doctor um, is. Who it went to you. my doctor, my arthritis doctor, my rheumatologist, and he said that, um, what's it called psoriatic arthritis is what I have, yeah. right? Um, he said consistent with that. He said I have arthritis in both sacroiliac joints, which is back here in your hip area, mm -hmm. and one side is worse than the other. Um, he says right now because I'm so active, I don't need to change anything unless this really starts bothering me. He asked me a bunch of questions about pain, and I answered the questions, and now that I answered the questions, everything's changed. <laughs> That's the way it always um, goes. My hands hurt, and my, mm -hmm. and my shoulders hurt, and all that kind of stuff, but I think that might be weather coming in. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, you know, he showed me the x-ray. You can see, like, the white and that kind of thing. One side is 
worse than the other. The right side is worse than the be the left side, which I can feel because when he asked me where my pain was, I said that's what I told him. And then he told me which side looked mm -hmm. worse, and he said one side is generally worse than the other. The interesting thing is is that women don't usually get this. Uh, young Go younger figure. guys get it. Um, usually you don't get arth women don't get arthritis there apparently. So uh, I am keeping in the tradition of our family not doing anything normal. Uh, so yeah, that's I, I still have some pain issues that uh, need to be resolved. I'm going to the dentist the day after tomorrow to talk about the night guard. Brittany, thank you for answering me. I haven't had a chance to respond. I did see it. Oh, also, Laura, I owe you a response um, on a couple of levels, okay? I just haven't had a chance to do it, okay? You're in my thoughts and prayers, and you, sh you know that. But anyway, I wanted to make sure she realized that. Mm -hmm. um, but in any event, we're moving forward. My night guard thing is working about 85 90%. I'm having some issues that I'm going to talk to the dentist about, mostly stemming from not being able to eat certain kinds of foods mm -hmm. because my jaw will act up. It'll slide forward or it will want to pretend like it locks. I need to know if that's just an arthritis type thing that I have to just be careful of or if it's really going to lock and I'm going to have issues. Mm -hmm. So, uh, But in general, it does work. Um, I'm a lot more comfortable than I was three weeks ago when I first started it. So, I mean, I have pain in the morning when I get up and I have to take the thing out because it's holding my jaw where it's not supposed to, you know, it's not wanting to be, but it is helping. So that's good. Um, for me, there's nothing really new. I mean, got glasses, um, that are actually ready for me to pick up. Um, hopefully tomorrow. Yes. No, not tomorrow, Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. We will, um, my mom comes back from her dental appointment, she'll pick me up, swing by, make sure they don't need to do any adjustments. I also have in the works, um, apparently it takes them three weeks to get all the materials together, then they send it within a week or so. Um, for what? For my migraine ones. Oh, right, right, right. Because mm -hmm. I'm tired of this double layer. The plastic is making my face sweat. And I think it's just a double layer. It's just, it's not particular. I never know which glasses has a smudge on it. Um, and it just drives me insane. So, I have a normal pair of glasses, and then I'll have I have a specific migraine pair that I can wear that has a script to it, um, and it does also have the. I chose the one that happened to have a bit of a wrap around and had the metal and the little nose pieces. Mm -hmm. My actual glasses don't have the little nose pieces, but she said it should be, you know, fine. Fine, yeah. Um, they're cute. They're red. So that's basically what we have for that. We have other things that are going on with other members of our family that we, you know. Privacy pipe. Yeah. We got video of me walking mm -hmm. when I'm at, a, at my worst, mm -hmm. um, which is what my plan is if I do have to get surgery, because it took me a long time to find video of someone's gait to try to convince myself that, well, to come to terms with whether or not this was actually what I had. Because what happens for me, I guess this happens a lot, if I have a lot of activity, that's where I'll start, or if it's bad, it's a lot of weather, I'll start having worse symptoms. But if I rest, I might not hardly have any trouble walking at all unless it's like dark or whatever. Um, but uh, what I want to do, because I, after much searching, I found this one girl who did her before and after. I want to put together a before and after if I have to have surgery. So that way, if they don't find hers, they can find mine. And someone else can be helped the way I was mm -hmm. to make me help me come, kind of come to terms with what might be going on. Right, right. Um, because I found that very helpful after the initial like shock of, oh no, you possibly will have something else going on that you right, didn't expect. Right. And I um, did join a writer's group. Mm -hmm. on, a, an oh, that was fun group. for you. That was fun. Um, don't know if I'll continue because it's during date night, but it's once a month it's and once dad month. wants you to go. It was fun. And it was so cute because I'm easily the oldest person there. Um, and so I, I got there and I parked in the front. I mean, I was, I was able to find a, a parking spot right on main street, which is really I don't know Miracle. how I managed to do that. Yeah. But anyway, I was kind of nervous because then I would have to walk in the alley and out the front by myself. Mm -hmm. And there's all these motorcycles because we're starting to come into season yeah. for our tourists. And so I was talking to one of the young ladies there. It had to be younger than Talia even, I think. And I was talking That's to her. That's not hard anymore, Mom. Anyway, <laughs> she, I was talking to her and I was. she said, well, I'll walk you. I said, so I said, okay, that's fine. I said, but I'm going to give you a ride to your car. She said, oh, you don't have to do that. I said, no. If I if you're getting me here because you, I'm nervous and, and you want to make sure I get home safely, I'm going to make sure you get to your car safely because I won't be able to rest until I know you got there safely. 
okay, that's fine. That works good. So she humored the old lady. <laughs> so, I used to do the same thing for my friends when I was in uh, college. But age. she, but she, so I drove her back around, and now I know where to park so that when we all come out, I come out with them, and we're all together. Even if I have to walk a little way to my car, they're all there. Right. It's not like you're walking no. out by yourself. If I were to shout or something. Yeah. And I know it sounds overly dramatic, but if no, I No, were... because people make the mistake of saying, oh, it's a small town. Nothing can happen. But we're the, Plenty of things happen in small towns. And we are in a tourist town, and we are getting into tourist well, time. Well, I so, think even... It doesn't matter if you're a tourist town or not. Any, you just have to watch enough to, true crime to see it. it. Anything can happen anywhere. Well, I get that. But my point is is mm -hmm. that you know, a small town is going to be less likely. But we do potentially. have... We, potentially. But we do have certain things that happen, you know, that, you know, especially during tourist season, when you have an influx of people that come from all over the place. So you don't know who they are. And then you have, you know, other things that, you know happen because we're rural like oh this is a great place to do drug stuff you know yeah, we, we do have um, um so i mean i haven't heard anything in a while but you know it's just i i know that before we got here they had some kind of major bust over by out, out back in the country and a bit. i worked health care and i would see the people come in who use drugs mm -hmm. who overdosed or things you know. i mean it's not like the city is no it, i mean is, but you know, we but, have enough of an issue well, everybody does. So you just have to be careful. That's yeah. why we try to impress on Davina. You don't have to be afraid. You have to be aware. And um, so, but I think a lot of people think, and I would notice this when I was in um, high school, college, even after, um, you know, new working at my work, I would go out with friends who were maybe more trusting of people than I was. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, we're just going to walk in the dark, you know, just a couple of us. So go down this alley, walk in the dark up you know, towards this, where we're parked, which is all the way down there. It's like, no, you're not. But it's perfectly said, get in the car. Just, just be quiet and get in <laughs> just, the car. Just, just don't. It's, don't be dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you probably won't get something happening. But you know what? Why risk it? Yeah. It, 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 especially it, when somebody's willing to Someone's willing to drive you. And the one time... You might be that one statistic. Mm -hmm. It's a reasonable, you know, you aren't, it's not, trust but verify. You know, yes, I trust nothing will happen, but just in case. Yeah, it's called covering your bases. Covering your bases. Um, yeah. I don't trust people. <laughs> I do. I do trust people, but I am also very aware. Yes. So, yes. you know, and it doesn't help that if I go out the door, my husband's like, okay, park under a light, do mm -hmm. this, do that. So I am very aware and, you know, I can't run like I used to, I, you know, if I wanted to. So, I mean, I can run, I can, but. I used to be that person who, if I w had to park in a dark area, because this would happen in nursing school where, where we part where I had to park until I was an upperclassman, was up in the boondocks. Mm. Um, and nurse in our clinicals would be, like, before the sun came yeah, up. I was very annoyed um, by that. So what I would do is I would call my friend in California uh -huh. and be talking to him on the phone when I walked to my car. So that way at least... Well, that was here. I did that there, too, yeah. because yeah. he graduated sooner than I did. Yeah. Um, so at least I was talking to someone on the phone... Um, and they don't know if you're talking to somebody too Exactly. Down. They don't know who I'm talking to. And yeah, when I also had to take out the trash at my mm -hmm. uh, work, it well, was started, right by a wood. I started taking you to the to mm -hmm. the trash can because they, we have bears. Bears <laughs> like... <laughs> we have bears. Never mind people. We have bears. Well, we also had that 7-Eleven that was right there. Yeah. Get robbed. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it was like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll wait. Mm -hmm. Or talk to someone on the phone so it doesn't... So yes, this is your safety section. This apparently, is your PSA. yeah, yes, okay. Um, um, anyway, yes. We, we'll we'll get off our soapbox now. We will wish you um, a very. I, I feel like you know that what was that there for like who always talked about there's for like fire safety and like Smokey the bear. Smokey the bear. I had a mental picture of him, and I'm sure there was some sort of mask off for like don't do drugs or whatever. I don't remember. The, I, I, don't do, I do remember the dog in Europe, the fire dog. That's who I'm thinking of. The fire dog. The fire dog. Yep, oh, what him. was his name? I forget. McGruff or McGruff. I think it was. Was McGruff. that the McGruff? I think it was McGruff. That's who I he, think I was trying to remember. But he wasn't only. He wasn't only fire though. I think he was also like don't talk to strangers. I think he was. And all that kind of stuff. I think yeah. that's why I said safety, and I saw an animal, and I couldn't remember his name. So I was like, oh, maybe Smokey the Bear. No, it's McGruff. And I, yes. Yeah. 
Oh, I forgot about he was in, He was in Europe. Uh, yeah. He might have been here in the States, too, but we were in Europe, so. That's that's probably... On, on the base, so it was probably American. That's probably... I don't remember him very well, but well enough that I was like, there's some sort of animal mascot for safety. Yeah. Nick Ruff. Okay, so there's your Nick Ruff announcement. Fun stuff for the day. Um, we want to wish you all a very blessed week full of knitting, crocheting, and everything that makes your heart happy. And we hope to see you here again for the Foot of the Woman Cave next week. For those of you who are patrons, don't forget the live stream. This is the Pen, Hook, and Needles podcast, episode 508, and that's a wrap. Bye.